Oh. Hello, my lovelies. Oh, I hope you had a lovely weekend. Well, I don't know what to talk about. Oh, Bill Gates. Getting 25 years. Not exactly Bill Gates, but you know. The equivalent of Bill Gates. But also Vladimir Putin and other madness that's going on. Oh. Yeah. It was Hello, obviously lovely. a very democratic oh, election. Oh, sure, well, I just stopped that. Talk. Go, again. I need to get another sound card. <laughs> well, I hope you're all doing very, very well. And I'm going to go live as well on the short feed. Present live that we are. Oh, crikey, should I do it? Oh, should I not? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Too late. I've done it. Well, hello, my lovelies. Well, today we're going to be talking about Vladimir Putin and, uh, well, the British Bill Gates. You could get 25 years, yeah. <laughs> That's these tech gurus for you, isn't it? Well, hello, everybody. I hope you all had a lovely weekend and uh, looking forward to this show tonight. So who have we got here at the moment in the... Oh, crikey, oh, I haven't put it in the chat. Wait, where's, my, where's my chat gone? Oh, blimey. Crikey, I didn't do it, that's why. There we go, let's put that in. Is that one? What's that one? Maybe it's that one. Yep, that's that one. Okay. Oh, hello. <laughs> Top chat. Oh, is that the right one? I got them into the live chat. There we go. I make that a bit bigger. Well, I'm all a bit kind of skewiff at the minute because I, I haven't been in that long and I had to get ready for the show. And I thought, oh my gosh, should I do this or should I do that? Oh, well, Vladimir Putin has just de been democratically elected, apparently. If, if that's what you call democracy. Yeah, well, it doesn't look like democracy to me. When they're in the polling booths and then there's geezers there with machine guns. Going in the polling booths. I've got a little video clip of that for you. Lovely. Yeah. I just scare them out the wits, why don't you? But saying that, the old Vladimir Putin still has a lot of support. Not just in Russia. Now also in the UK. Russians are still living in the UK. Lock them up, I say. Oh, that's well. Okay, maybe not all of them, but you know. Those who support Putin. What the hell are they doing there <laughs> in the UK? I'll never know. I don't get it. No, that I don't. Well, oh, the world has gone absolutely bonkers. That it has. So, let me just bring that one out there. Got that one there. Got my bottle silent. That's good. Excellent. There we are. Oh, dear. So, it's true to say that the um, Exapoles. We're in Vladimir Putin's, um, how to put it, uh, best interests. Not anyone else says no. He obviously he needs, uh, you know, Russia's, Russian people's money, don't he? So he can build maybe another mansion. Secret mansion. Yeah. But well, Navalny, you know, Alexei Navalny, he found out about it, didn't he, you know? Yeah, then got poisoned in his underwear. And then he got murdered. Well, allegedly. Got topped in the gulag. Although Donald Trump don't seem to mind. No, he don't seem to give a damn, does he? No. As long as Donald Trump is okay. Yeah, he'll do whatever he can to get his, uh, well, foot in that door yet again. Unfortunately for everybody else in the world. So anyway, I will go look in the chat one on. Anyway, here we go in the chat first. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Right. <laughs> Hello, Joe. Oh, you're well, my friend. And Afterglow, uh, content. <laughs> Couldn't abend as a, oh good evening to you. Two. And Ginger Strauss, hello there. Are you looking forward to another well Donald Trump presidency? <laughs> no, yeah, you are. Oh okay. Uh, it takes all sorts, you know. And uh, Doc Davies, hi Balkus and everyone. And Alistair McKay, hello then chat. And Pete Dallas, cross fan in the works. <laughs> hello, my friend, hope you're well. And uh oh god, Ginger Nick Young. And the only one these ninjas as Tom Care. Hello, uh, the song I see in the in on the woodworking uh live stream earlier today. Yeah, we've got a woodworking live stream as well that we do. Been doing silly buggers on there as well. Oh uh, Ginger says no, no, no I don't think Ginger's is looking forward to uh well the the thought of Donald Trump being the president again. Crikey, the damage he caused. 
But apparently, according to him, you know, there was no wars while I was, you know, I was in the, uh, you know, Russia didn't invade Ukraine or anything. Well, okay, they're going to be fighting the Donbass for God knows how long, but you know, <laughs> you know, yeah, okay. Well, the world's gone absolutely mad. Hello, um, Jeanette as well, Jeanette Carpenter, hope you're well. All right, and in the other chat, in the, uh, oh, and there, there we go. Do, 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 do. Okay. Hello, very O'Brien. Hello, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. How about you? Uh, okay. Yes, unfortunately, old uh, Donny Trump is supporting uh, Vladimir Putin. Well, that's all about the golden showers, isn't it? So I've been told, yeah. And Vladimir Putin has a huge majority. I ain't surprised when you get rid of the opposition. Uh huh. You know, the strong opposition, that is, because all the others only got about 3% of the vote, you see. I think the people are just scared to vote, you see, as well. So the exit poll showed that Vladimir Putin uh, was winning a huge majority in Russia's uh, presidential election, which had only, well, one possible outcome, only one possible result. It's not democracy, is it? No, it's not. So the exit poll by the... um. Uh, Russian Public Opinion Research Centre suggests that 87.9% of the people voted for the incumbent. Vladimir Putin. Mm. Putin. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, about 70 odd percent. Uh, 70 or 74 percent. Quite a large proportion apparently is a lot of the turnout. Apparently. Well, it was probably after Alexei Navalny's uh, missus said, oh, go on, let's all get down to the old, uh, uh, to the polling stations and show our support for Navalny, her husband, Alexei Navalny, or, um, yeah, late Nick, Le Alexei Navalny. Well, she's getting criticised for not going to the ferry road this, that, and the other, but that's just, um, she get locked up, wouldn't she? Probably. Also, her kids get locked up. It's not safe, their problem, is it? Who would want to go to Moscow? If you're going to get locked up or poisoned or something, she can still cause, you know, old Vladimir Putin a lot of trouble. That she can. Put her in the gulag next, wouldn't they? So, oh dear. So now makes a poll by pollster FOM showed Putin won 87.8%. Well, I'm fairly confident now that Vladimir Putin has won. Unfortunately. Uh, I'm... Blimey. Whatever flipping next, wouldn't you say? No. There were long queues, though. So the Russians, uh, they formed long queues at the polling stations in, you know, noon against uh, Putin, uh, Putin protests. And this, you know, Yulia. Yulia Navalny is uh, a call to uh, turn up at midday to signal dissent against Vladimir Putin. Uh, long queues formed at several Poland stations in Moscow and other Russian cities as people uh, up a call for Alexei Navalny's widow to head the polls at noon on uh, Sunday in a symbolic show of dissent against Vladimir Putin's all but dis uh, certain re-election as president. It was just a foregone conclusion, wasn't it? It's just madness. He has got a lot of support. That's what propaganda does, isn't it? You know, if you've got the money and you got you can pump the money. The work with Cambridge Analytica, for instance, they pump the money into that. You know? God. Well, in the run-up to the three-day presidential elections, Yulia, uh, Yulia Navalny uh, urged her supporters to um, protest against Putin to, by appearing on mass at midday on uh, Sunday in a show, legal show of strength against a long time Russian leader. I can't think actually to uh, think about Cam Jadalithia again. Did that Hester Geezer, you know, the one who was rather, how to put it, racist towards Diane Abbott, uh, wasn't he one of the uh, primary support you know, uh, funders of um, hmm, Vote Leave? And Cambridge Analytica. Oh, yes, he was, wasn't he? <laughs> Lovely man. Well, anyway, the Poland uh, protest was labelled noon against Putin, and Navalny endorsed the plan before he died. 
Navalny his team, called uh, on voters to spoil their ballot papers, write Alexei Navalny across the voting slip, or vote for one of the uh, three candidates um, standing against Putin. Now, through the, uh, the, although the opposition regards them as Kremlin puppets, uh, reports from the, gr the ground suggested uh, coups suddenly formed at numerous polling stations across Russia's uh, big cities as the, the, the clock struck midday. And think it's only the bravest of the Russians who go actually there and protest against Putin because they don't want to get locked up. They can't even say it's a war. It's got this special military operation or something. At 11.55, there was no line at all. At 12.01, there was already a, a line of around 80-odd people uh, in, in Medizoda. Uh, an independent Russian outlet reported from uh, a polling station in northeast Moscow. Fontanka, St. Petersburg-based outlet, published footage of a long queue forming at the polling station on Nevsky Prospect, the principal avenue in the centre of Russia's uh, biggest, second biggest city. So there is obviously, well, that's going to, always going to be. The thing is, though, right, the majority voting for, I say voting, okay, air quotes, uh, voting for uh, Vladimir Putin has actually gone up over the years, not down. It's higher in 2024 than it has been ever since he, uh, well, become leader. The Russian president. Higher now. And they, that's not normal. It's usually the other way round. You don't gain support, generally. People start getting a bit bored of you. And they say, oh, I don't want to change now. I'm not getting what I want. Either he's actually miraculous or he's, uh, quite frankly, uh, adpotent. Scaring people into voting for him. Or it's just rigged. Oh, <laughs> no. What, Vladimir Putin? Oh, crikey. Have you noticed all the um, positive feedback or promotion? Oh, I put all the propaganda on, like, oh, X and... Oh, Twitter. Twitter, that's it. Twitter, that's it. And just, just loads of it out there at the moment. How wonderful Putin is. Have they laughing, you? Murderous son of a bitch that he is. Blimey. Well... Oh, people are crazy. I talk smoke, hope you well. Think of my neighbours are hard at it. She sounds like she is uh, getting completely destroyed. Either that or, or what? Okay. There's something going on uh, uh, next door to Top Smoke at the moment. I hope you're recording that. You know, you can post that one later. Uh, Simon Wood. So, Lamb is saying, uh, did better in his election 100%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get rid of the opposition, and then you were clear to win, aren't you? As a majority. Blimey. The other thing, you got 3% of the... 3% each, pretty much. It's nuts. Ah, uh, Donnie lives in opposition land. Oh, blimey. Does he? Okay. Even though, hello, Grant Sloan. I hope you're well. And, oh, my God, I've got lights flashing over there. And uh, Simon Wood, actually, Scotland could power it from all the green energy... Scotland sends to England, Northern, Northern Ireland. What, what have I missed? What have I missed? Do, 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 do. Simon Wood, Simon Wood, Simon Wood, Simon Wood. Oh, Simon Wood, there they This is a Brexit Britain, and we can't afford the electricity bill for Hadrian's, for Hadrian's War. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's factual or not, but that, that does sound rather funny. It ain't looking good. It really isn't looking good. I know they're trying... Uh, they'll try and sugarcoat... The, well, this government will try and sugarcoat everything, won't they? To the point of saying, OK, let's pay all the MPs more money. Let's pay rise time for the MPs. 91 grand they're getting now. The MPs. Oh, God, they work really hard, you know. Apparently. Yeah. So, so I've been told, they work so flipping hard, and they deserve... They do. They deserve every penny they get, apparently. According to this woman, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I'll, I might just show you that one. Okay, here we go. Some crazies out there, I'll tell you. Oh, there we are. What about the people who, you know, create the jobs? They have to stick their necks really? out. They have to take oh. a lot of risks. Well, they MPs. create the jobs yeah, that apparently. people.
can then work in, they need to be addressed also. And also the fact that these these uh, MPs, they're working very hard oh, very on hard. our behalf. I really think that they need to be paid for that. I mean, if you were if you were running a big firm, <laughs> you would be paid a lot more than that. And they're, they're running the country. They're also trying to negotiate with other countries, getting us deals and everything else. They have to be paid well. How the hell are they going to be motivated otherwise? Oh, I mean, it's oh, ridiculous oh, to say they shouldn't accept because they don't need it. I mean, how do you, anybody know, how do you know or any of us know what they need? Be, they've gone through hell for the past 10 years between COVID <laughs> and this and that and the other. And really, I feel that, you know, the poor are getting free legal, they're getting all the rest, they get everything free, they don't pay any taxes, most of them. I mean, some people work a little bit, but then there are other people who are just uh, defrauding the state and they have businesses in Morocco and everything else. Nobody even looks into that aspect of... Because the flippant government is in it as well. They've got their fingers in those pies that they have. Why do you think we got Brexit? Oh. The, the people on the dole, they come here and no, none of their background is checked whatsoever. And yet we're... They, they're, they're laughing up their sleeves at us. Taxpayers, high taxpayers, low taxpayers, I don't care what you call them. They're all taxpayers, and that's our money. And we're supporting them. They should have to work for their money, like the rest of us. Uh, lots of people getting free legal. Um, actually, if you were to talk to anybody in the legal field, um, uh, particularly solicitors who are doing legal aid work, they will tell you that the legal aid budget has been shrunk back like never before. I agree with you, Vicky, absolutely. We should be cracking down on those people who are uh, perpetrating benefit fraud, but that's not... Oh, what, like my brother-in-law, who's still in, where was it now? Oh, crikey, some island somewhere diving uh, while he's claiming his disability benefit. Yeah, diving, disability benefit, yeah. People, crikey. Not really the issue today. The question here is about public servants who are at the higher end of the wage bracket. And those public servants, in this case, happen to be MPs who are allowed to take second jobs, and many, many of them do. And the question here is, when we have been through such a period of hardship, does it help win over or undermine public trust when they when MPs appear to be on course to accept an above inflation pay rise. My opinion is get everybody out of bed in the morning, get them working, get them doing something for their money that they're getting from our pockets and get them to get up and sort out their lives. And believe me, I mean, unless they're deaf, dumb and blind, that should be happening, but it's not. They're getting more and more money. <laughs> What can you say to that? These people, they're on another planet. They really are. Anyway, that kind of went a bit off track, that did, didn't it? Eh? Well, we'll go back into the chat for a second. Try and keep up with people, you see. Oh, great. Have I got the... Yes, I have got timestamps on. That's good, good, good. Who have we got down here? Right. Hello, Andre. I hope you're well. Oh, God. They've gone mad. They are mad. They're all mad. Hello, Wrigley. I hope you're well. Uh... MPs work as hard as the royals. Yeah, they're flipping sitting on their hands at the moment, aren't they? And what about that blooming picture? What on earth is going on with Catherine? Mm. I tell you what, I think she's been chopped up. That's why I'd stick her back up and it back together again, you know, like Humpty Dumpty. And create like this AI image. Uh, definitely, to me, it looks doesn't look like something she's edited. Now I do edit photo editing quite a lot of it, and that does not look edited. That looks AI generated, if you ask me. You don't get ghosting when you edit something by hand. And that's what you can see with her hands not lining up. And that's ghosting. And that's where, like, for instance, if you're doing like, a panorama of images, like, stick them all together, and it, you, then you click go, and it, it, it does all the stitching for you. Well, that's where they don't quite marry up, and that's what a ghosting is. That's not Catherine just like, oh, I, 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 I'm going to tweak my picture. I'm going to take the wedding ring off. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. No. That's AI generated. Mm hmm. So, make of that what you will. Where is Kate? Uh huh. Actually, where's the king? I know he's got cancer, isn't he? So, I kind of forgive him, but in her day, 
I don't understand flipping royals anyway. I, what, what have we got royals? We need Republic or something. And the flipping royal family, what's the point? It costs us like three or four hundred million just to look after the houses and security and stuff like that. But they don't tell you about all the other stuff they get. No. They don't tell you about the fact that we're pumping crap in the big holes in the ground for landfill, then we're actually paying them for the privilege of it. No. They're not telling you that we're paying them for the privilege of bathing our feet in this, in, on the coastline. No. It's just nuts. Things are getting crazy. You shouldn't do it. No. Oh, damn me, people. We ain't angry, they do. They really do. It's just... That, 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 you, don't you say, that they're the ones who should be getting up in the morning. You know, getting them back to work. Sweeping the roads or something. Helping little old ladies cross the road. Or be, be a lollipop uh, stick lady or person. Whatever's pretty correct these days. Oh, damn. Hello, Joey Mary also you know. Hello, Regan Lee. And night one leads. More brown envelopes for MPs. Bigger ones and fatter ones, yes. MPs work as hard as the royals. <laughs> so I love that. <laughs> oh, Ginger's Rob. So no, there's no extreme right wing here. We have an article in the Constitution that bans it. That's what we need in the UK because it's, they're breeding like flipping rats, they are. The right wing nut jobs in the UK. Should I just say in little England? Maybe. Okay, you have got your. There are they. They are in Scotland as well, and they are Wales as well. Got me saying Northern. You know, they're about. They certainly are in Northern Ireland as well. Crikey, it's just messed up. Is absolutely messed up. Well, <laughs> uh, a YouTube video said so, and the video is five days old. Oh, crikey, okay. Uh, <laughs> the MPs work as hard as the Royals. No, they don't. They work harder than the Royals. At least you occasionally see them. You know, you, you get the likes of, I don't know, 30p Lee walking down the street somewhere, don't you? Pointing at all these people. Or hanging out with Richard Lice. Of the reform... I need reforming, actually. Or geriatric, you see. Belind me. How many times are they going to have to be, I don't know, redoing their driving licence? Very soon. Every three years. Yeah, the jet can't do well. Doesn't the UK have a VAT on food? No. It, it has VAT on everything else to get the food, OK, onto the shelves, which means the supermarkets and the stores and stuff like that can't claim the VAT back on those items that they're already paid VAT on to get the items onto the shelf. Because they can't charge you VAT. VAT. So it, 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 it's complicated. Yeah. Coffee barista, for instance, paying VAT on the coffee that he buys, the grains, in that form. Yeah, the you know, yeah, coffee grains, 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 and to make your coffee, but can't charge you VAT for it. Some children's shoes and stuff like that. Still got to be transported and all that stuff is VAT. And what about all the duty and the VAT on the field to get it to the shop, get it onto the shelves? Everything's VAT and everybody pays taxes. Everybody. If you if you eat food, you pay taxes. You just do. If you're unemployed or what you are, you're still paying taxes. You pay taxes on absolutely everything. Yes, the taxes are high. And they're mismanaged. I don't necessarily think we need to be increasing the taxation in the UK. I think we need to look where we're actually where we're spending it. Maybe we have some tax cuts by paying the MPs less money. Maybe that's what we've got to do. What were they getting paid, these MPs, right, during the Brexit debate? Was that 80 or 83,000 they were getting a year? And that was 91. It ain't that long ago. This is above inflation pay rise they got. Above inflation. How is that right when everybody else is struggling? How does that look? Uh, to be honest with me, it looks absolutely diabolical. They're taking the piss out of you people. They really are. God, thank God I escaped. Although I got my student loan letter come through. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, dear. yes, I went to university. Oh, oh cool. Oh, Alistair, oh, cheers. Alistair, gifted five All Shorts memberships. Oh, nice one, buddy. 
Oh, cool. Up we come, up we come, up we come. What have I missed? What have I missed? Oh, thank you, my friend. Excellent. Uh, one, two, EU citizen, the EU citizen, and Joe Maros, and uh, Brussels picker, and Askia, a fiddlist, and a fiddlist, whatever, and uh, Top Smoke. Oh my god, I'm giving one. <laughs> Blimey. <laughs> Love you, Top Smoke. <laughs> and after, oh, uh, what have we got there? Sunlight is fine. Do you see mine? I don't, I don't think I've got so light, actually. There you go, you'll be able to tell it's covered in hair. So you never know. No, you see, the top end is now looking like the bottom end. <laughs> All coarse and wiry, you know it is. <laughs> yeah, top gaze it. Uh, so Larry the Cat, hope you're well. And Matt, hello Matt. <laughs> you're a true gent, Alistair Care. He is. Uh, da, 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 da. What about Phil? Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. What? Love for the toy. Oh dear. <laughs> uh, what about Phil's wet dreams? I think you're talking about Phil Morehouse, aren't you? Oh dear, I don't know if I should do this. Uh, his love for the toys collapse is very unhealthy. Oh, well, I love the fact the toys are collapsing as well. The only thing I would say is we need a valid opposition. And I don't think the toys are it, to be fair. But we do need a valid opposition in Parliament. It's no good we just having this, like, carte blanche. I don't want Labour having carte blanche. I want Tories out. But I want the rub up against someone. <laughs> Not like that. It's fat in the eye, no. But you know, they, they need to actually have someone to debate with, an opposition have different points of view. Well, we need a coalition. Not co well, that is a possibility. I don't think it's going to happen, though. I think I think we're foregone conclusion now that we're going to get a, a pretty had to put a strong turnout for for Labour, even though Labour hasn't been kind of well recently. I think he's been cocking up a little bit. Although I have to admit, if uh, if Keir Starmer. As the Prime Minister, that's what he said the other day regarding the arts. And actually does something for the better. Maybe negotiate some kind of relationship with the EU regarding um, the movement, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, begun for, for the arts, just for the arts and what have you. Create, for the general, you know, create some general, well, then crikey, you know, and push money into. Because what these Tories have done, they're pushed back against the arts. They're cut, 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 cut for the arts. We need to be putting money into the arts because the arts and music and stuff like that's more than just what it is. It's going to be your soul. It's your soul, you know. Makes people who, they, you know, let them express themselves through music. Not just performing, but also listening and being absorbed by it. How many times you stuck a your headphones on this bit of music and you feel consumed by the music? Makes everything feel better, if you ask me. We need that. And the Tories have been trying to take that away. Because they're happy for us to be their little how put it, plebs. And do whatever they want us to do. They're not interested in anything else. No. They just want to control us. But they're failing miserably now because it's, well, they lost our support. We lost faith in the Tories. Well, they've had faith in the Tories themselves. But, you know, I'm talking about you know, their supporters. The crazies out there who never really saw the light. The light, the light. Follow the light, carry on. <laughs> oh dear. Hello, Jasper Edwards, hope you well. Delta Mike down and out in. Oh, needs more subscribers. Delta Mike da down and in. I don't know who that is. Hello there, my friend, hope you well. Eat food, pay uh, Texas. Eat food, paid Texas. <laughs> At the moment, we're probably paying how to put uh, Australia, maybe, with all this uh, Australian meat flooding the markets, our supermarkets, and God knows what else, and the school dinners and all that sort of stuff, and prison food, and God knows what else. Uh, yeah, uh, but what are we exporting to uh, the you know, uh, to Australia? Deadly squat. Yeah, but we knew that, didn't we? It's a one-way street, but it is. So much for these trade deals. 
Uh, whatever, I hope you will. Whatever. <laughs> Those warm sounds from euphomium. <laughs> you euphomium. What? <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Uh, Teresa Goldfeet needs more money for the electric to run the electric <laughs> the electric fence around her pen. <laughs> you're a sod you are. <laughs> Very politically incorrect, I must say. Is Top Snake. There we go. What happens is I start reading and I don't realise I'm reading until I've got halfway through. But oh God, why did I say that? I suppose I better carry on now. <laughs> and so I would. Oh, great. What have I missed? What have I missed? Do, 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 do. There we go. After, thank me, darling. She's just passed me. I got my, I got my tea. Okay. Is it my regularly? Always my regularly. It's basically licorice, licorice tea. Licorice tea. Oh, my licorice tea, isn't my darling? How are you? You human? Are you an human? Are you are you human? Yeah. Uh, an alien. An alien. Oh, okay. <laughs> what, what, whatever. Whatever. Blimey. me. We've been making them. Um, all we all we've been making today, darling. We were on our. We're really good We've been making it something totally pointless. Okay. We've been building a wordy gig, haven't we, darling? A wordy gig. Yeah. A, wor a wordy gig, a wordy bird, wordy, yeah. or uh, a windmill thing, a powered yeah. thing, and it's going to have a little moving yeah. characters on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Usually on, on live or not, but every Saturday or Sunday. Yeah, I'm trying to teach her woodwork, and she managed to put drill bits in upside down. <laughs> yeah. And use the wrong end of a chucky. I don't know how she does that. <laughs> I think it's some things, right? Of course you do. Yeah, some things. Yeah. No, she doesn't. No, she doesn't. It's fun anyway. That's what I, um on a on our woodworking channel. We went live today. I think it's this afternoon sometime. Uh, hello, tube driver. Hope you're well. Even all from Saint Leonard's on Sea. Hello there. Uh, people in parts of Yorkshire asked the SNP, oh, uh, the SNP, if they could represent them. Represent them before. If they could, oh, people in parts of Yorkshire. Oh. <laughs> I don't think it works like that. <laughs> yeah, she's she's still about. How is your Mrs. Regan? She was funny. She was a little bit drunk when we saw her. Yeah, on your live stream. By the way, Regan Elite has his own uh, um, YouTube channel for which he uh, goes live quite regular, actually. And he he, he, has the, he does the sensible figure and um, pre schedules all his lives instead of like oh I'll go live oh, quick I'll go live in two hours I forgot. <laughs> A quick schedule like me. That's kind of what I'm doing. I'm a bit erratic. I mean, I'm all over the place. Can you tell? Oh, there. I saw St. Patrick's Day Parade. Mm -hmm. Apparently. In California. And it uh, was representing. In California. Okay. So, that's cool. If, this, if the SMP, the Scottish National, uh, not Nationalist Party, uh, Alexander Boris de Bethel Johnson, you're flipping. Kipper. That you are. Well, <laughs> if the SNP becomes the dominating party, would they let England be independent? <laughs> well, they lost all control, so it wouldn't really matter to them, would it? I don't know. <laughs> that is a thought, though, isn't it? That is a thought. I'll tell her you said that. She was a little tipsy, Regan. Well, that was funny. You, yeah, you let us let us speak more. That's what you need to do. Let us speak more. Is Richie Sue next? Uh, <laughs> it's chicken kosher. Oh God knows. Uh, afterglow, and after one uh, ten ten, an English independence vote would have taken them out of the EU. I suppose it would have done, wouldn't it? If you talk about the NDF too, NDF. Sorry, that's the next one. They'd have to apply, wouldn't they? That's a good point, actually. Didn't think, didn't think about that. So you'd have to, yeah, you'd have to be accepted. But they were lied to anyway. To be fair to um to Scotland, they were lied to. They were promised that uh, they wouldn't be uh, having a referendum vote, but we did. So they were lied to. Billy Kershaw just come from Bowl the Hat Man's live stream. Oh, I can't. Oh, Craig didn't realize he's alive. Oh well. I'm always like this time, so he stole my time, little bugger. 
So, <laughs> uh, Chicago cover their gr uh, river in green on this day. It's pretty damn cool. They colour their rivers green. Yeah, I'm sure that does the fish a lot of good. <laughs> Is it a bit like that, um, that old Yana River in uh, India? It's got a pink foam all over it. Is it like that? You know, very healthy. Uh, we trade understanding. With, uh, we have a trade understanding with Texas, and we give them money, and Texas takes the piss. Yeah, pretty much. And we've, we've got we just take that as another was it um, statewide uh, trade deal. They're pointless. They're pointless. We we need you need a federal one. You know, for the whole the whole United States. What we're gonna do is we're gonna airlift the stuff in, have we? <laughs> That's not work. Oh, hoping you, Bella says, hoping you meant Microsoft, Bill Gates. No, actually, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, <laughs> we'll get into that in a minute. We'll get into that in a minute. So, ah, uh, so food grade dye. It still seems a total waste. You could say cochineal uh, beetle is a a food grade dye. You know, basically the beetle's been murdered. Yeah, that's a red dye. Tucker and Putin a lonely night in Moscow. Uh, Moscow, a uh, cold wind outside, and a uh, wine bowl and vodka shot. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> that's just that. that's not that Bill Gates. <laughs> oh, when I was um, doing fundraising for the uh, RSPCA, we managed to get some uh, charitable funding from the Bill Gates, uh, Bill and Linda Gates Foundation. Remember rightly at that time. It's probably still called the same thing, I imagine. Oh, that was a long time ago. That it was. Well, ah. right. <clears throat> so where was I? That one there. That one there. But it's not surprising at all. Also, I got a beard as well. Yeah, talk to me. You like a good beard, don't you? Mm. Uh, da, 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 da. where are we? Um, we oh, there. oh, here we go. So this is how they perform their um, polling booth checks. Now I'm just going to bring the uh, short feed round so they can see. Oh, crikey! Can you say? Can you say? No, not really. What can you say? Just about. All right. This is how they perform their polling uh, checks. Just here. Okay. Uh, that's how it's done, of course, you know, it's all very legit. Yeah. Democracy. Sovereignty. Okay. Democracy. Yeah, we've got a geezer there, a uh, military geezer with a machine gun, just... Uh... Oh, never know. oh, what are you up doing there? Okay, oh, okay. You, oh, you put it in the right box, aren't you? Yeah, you in the, the Putin box, not that box, the Putin box. That's pretty much what they're saying, yeah. Doesn't sound very democratic. Oh, doesn't look very democratic to me. No. Blimey. It's not surprising though, is it? To be fair. But, you know, Putin does have quite a bit of support still. From the, the Russian people. Fairly good Russian people. Or at least I think they are. Let's see. Blimey. People joining the queue more recently um, aren't part of the protest. If I could just in the UK. speak to you. Yeah. Um, if you don't mind me asking, who are you here to vote for? Uh, it's actually a very private question, but Ooh. I will be voting for Putin. Um, it's well my... Yeah. Um, so, that so is, private, you know, she just... President. I'm, well, quite happy. President, yeah. Yeah, I'm quite happy with him. You know, I know that... Uh, tastes are differ, opinions also and differ, you know, people vote for whomever they want, uh, and um, at the end of the day we will Not see, around. you know, who win. But I'm, honestly, I'm quite happy with what we've I got, at least we know his policy, mm. I know where he's going like to, crazy, you know, and all the other um, candidates. Um, they are probably, you know, today they exist, tomorrow they disappear. It's one day, people. So I prefer to be more conservative and do, to do, trust those. Do you feel that you're in a minority here, or, or do you feel that other people who are going to vote for Putin uh, simply aren't prepared to say? 
You know, to be honest, um, if we will be now in Moscow or in St. Petersburg, so the people will be probably more scared to vote for whomever they want to vote. They will be all voting for, you know, the so she kind just of, but here... Confirmed that it's not a democracy. People be more scared to vote for who they want to vote for. Yeah, in London. It's like um, it's OK. It's people not. are more it's okay. free. They can vote for whomever they want. So nobody will stop them, nobody penalise them. Um, but I'm still happy to vote for Putin, even I'm in London, even I'm in England, I'm abroad, but I'm still quite happy what he's doing. I'm quite happy with his policy. and. To be honest, I strongly support him. But a lot like of the anger person. that we've heard expressed by other people really in the queue care. is about the they war in Ukraine, the it death of Alexei good. Navalny. How do you feel um, on those issues? What? You know, um, about Navalny. So this person, he knew where he's going to. So he, um, as far as I know, he was living in Germany. His family lived in Germany. His wife is in Germany. Kids, children in Germany. So uh, he had... You're in London! He had a quite comfortable life, so he knew what he is going for, returning back to Moscow. So he did it, knowing where he's going. He knew it will be not just like flowers. Um, so he got what he was going to. So, and I was that doesn't make it all right! I was actually very much uh, upset. Okay. I was very much upset that his wife didn't come for the funeral. His kids didn't come for the funeral. I find that... Because it's not all petals and flowers! You know, like a uh, sort of just, unhuman. Just that. You know, we're orthodox and it's, I think it's abnormal, you know, when the closest of the closest of your family don't come for the funeral. I find it strange, okay. you know, to be honest. Well, thank you. Thank you for talking. So, the, the, what? This is not normal circumstances. Tears. We've seen uh, you get Ukraine. Uh, obviously, nobody wants this war in Ukraine. Obviously, you know, like uh, I think there is nobody who uh, say that I want the war. Ev obviously, everybody against the war. And do you not but... blame Putin for the war? Um, you know, if you know, yes, it looks like from the first glance, yes, he stepped, you know, this border, so he get into the foreign country. That is true. But if you look deeper. What was the reason for this? If you understand the, you know, political background, if you see that how close the NATO come to uh, Russian borders, I don't think anybody will be happy if, say... How close to NATO? That doesn't make any sense. NATO's not in... Well, Ukraine's not a NATO member, is it? Not Estonia and Finland and all them lot, no. It's, it's Belarus. <laughs> I don't think so. These people are not the more of the rocker. They like uh, bugglers and somebody like come to your door and start knocking there. I don't think you will be happy. And uh, I'm not happy with this as well. So, I'm, you know, I understand that it's not from the first glance how it looks like. You know, I understand how it is, you know, like a, uh, in real, you know, like a story, how it works. It was prepared for a long, long time, it was going. The NATO was coming, unfortunately, closer, closer, closer and closer. So, you know, like we come to the point that there is no escape, that it should be done, something just to stop. Why was NATO set up? It was set up because of Russia. Yeah, NATO. Hopefully, you know, I don't know who is ruling NATO at the moment, but somebody, um, you know, clever people should be in the world, you know, just not to, you know, like expand it further and not to have this, uh, you know, like a third world war. Mm. Lovely people. She's living in London. People joining the queue more oh, recently. It's just, uh, just, oh, it fuddles my mind, it does. It fuddles my mind. These people are crazy. They really are. Crazies. Oh, dear. Carl's, uh, Joe Tucker Carlson likes wood. Tucker, Tucker Carlson likes wood, does he? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Joe Lifty Bow says, I'm not intoxicated. You're not intoxicated? I'm not yet, no. This is actually my second beer today, so it's, that's a lot for me at the moment. All the same, the first one was this after, early afternoon. 
Just come from the bowl hammer's live stream. Okay, there we go. Uh, what time is that? 10 6. A bit. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Steve McGowan, hope you're well. Uh, more uh, defolisticated. What does that mean? I don't know. Uh, defolisticated. Defolisticated. Why do you say that? Billy Kershaw. Uh, de oh, I can't say de -philos -philos -ticate. Oh, I don't, but it's just a oh, God's sake, <laughs> it's the same with the CCP and nationals. Love their country, move to the west. Yeah, it's probably right on that. God, yeah, the Chinese Communist Party makes no sense, does it? It really does make no sense. And there we've got, oh, Craigie, uh, TikTok, uh, you talk about China, and uh, it's a bike dance who owns uh, TikTok. Uh, they just, it's got to take a while to get through, if it gets finalised, what have you, and, and signed up, I don't know if it will or not, but regarding banning TikTok in the US, or forcing them to sell it to some to another company that isn't based in China. I think TikTok is a major problem itself, but there you go. Even though I, I put videos on TikTok as well. Uh, da -da. Russians allowed to vote in London. I wasn't allowed to vote against Brexit. Do you know what? That's a really good point. That's a really good point. But there we go. They're voting in the Russian elections. I think considering everything that went on, it should be allowed. Unless they're voting against him. <laughs> Uh, we have all our angels. Mine is my dad. Oh, Grant, Grant Slow said, what's it? Indeed. Uh, oh, Craig, uh, become. Uh, no problem, Joel. Uh, the angels who have my back in serious situations, St. Michael and my mum are up there. Cool. It's the same. Oh, done that already. There is a woman who's afraid of windows. Yes, you could say that. A woman is afraid of windows. Is it because of the, probably a percentage of the, uh, of electorate or those who run up against a Vladimir Putin have all been thrown out of windows. Her Russia is so great. She's in London, Grad. Yeah, I've, I've also, um, led by donkeys did a really good video on that. Uh, he knew he was going skydiving from the top floor hotel window without a parachute. So he thought, I'd go for a trip. That he did. That was a bit, I have to admit, that Frankly, that wasn't a very silly thing to do. But you, I suppose you want to, uh, I don't know, and the people, I suppose. It's brave, but also stupid. London grad, she's an oligarch. An oligarch? <laughs> uh, ain't heard that one. Lucky it was, what? What, excuse me? Steve would go and say, uh, I thought St. Patrick plugged the dam with finger and prevented a flood. What? I don't know. Maybe. I'll be voting for Putin. I want to live. That's pretty much it, isn't it? was scared. Luckily, there is support for him as well, though. But that's, that's just absolutely crazy. Why do people support him so much? You know. He's so dangerous... That are, 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 are very brave, okay, very brave, um, a minister, uh -huh. defence minister, Grant Shapps, he did a runner, but he decided he wasn't going to go to Odessa, yeah, Grant Shapps, he aborted his trip, he did, to southern Ukraine last week for security reasons, and the UK Defence Ministry has said he bottled it, eh, uh, scaredy cat. Could he sold, sent one of his aliases, like uh, uh, someone green and that other person? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I can't was it four of them? I can't remember their names now. <laughs> it's a fraud. Anyway, the Defence Secretary had to scrap his visit to Odessa last week after UK uh, intelligence reportedly warned that Russia had become aware of his travel plans. And he didn't go. Booger. Anyway, Mr. Champs was due to travel to Odessa a day um uh, was 
uh, a day after a missile hit the city while the Ukrainian president and Greek prime minister were visiting. Now, five people were killed in the strike, Ukrainian authorities had said. Now, you fed to Ukraine, they've been um, trying to... Was it drone attacks or missile attacks? What's coming now? On a oil refinery, one of the uh, major ones. I think it's like, it does 10% of all the uh, oil refinery in the... Uh, in the in Russia, so yeah, keep on bombing Russia. Yeah, not not Russia bomb Ukraine. I mean the yeah, Ukraine bombing Russia. Yeah, would not be very nice if they didn't have to, wouldn't it? The Mr. Shaps had travelled on an overnight train from Poland to Ukraine, accompanied by Chief of Defence Staff uh, Admiral Sir Tony Radigan. And a small team of British officials and the team of uh, their journey was to meet the Ukrainian leader Vladimir Zelensky and comedian. <laughs> and senior members of his wartime administration. Oh my god, my neighbour hates Zelensky and she, thinks Putin, and she thinks Putin's fantastic. God's sakes, people. Don't worry, they're the crazies that are here in France as well. They're here, I tell you. Especially in the limousine, where I live. Surrounded by them, unfortunately. Not all, obviously. But having arrived in Kiev on the 7th of March, Mr. Chap's onward journey to Odessa was cancelled abruptly at the last minute, following fear surrounding his safety. I'll tell you what, though. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, it... According to the Sunday Times, which had uh, a reporter uh, travelling with uh, his delegation, the trip was called off after an intelligence update uh, revealed that the Kremlin's knowledge of it. And then it added that the strike in Odessa the previous day raised the threat level to Mr. Sharp's safety. Uh, for, yeah, no, that's, the whole point. We want, that's why we want to go. <laughs> okay, We want them to get stuck there or something. You know, we don't want them back. You keep them. You don't want him. Anyway, it was substantial, but there was increased to critical. Poor old Mr. Chaps. Probably wears Chaps. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. One with a crotchless one, you know. Crikey. And underneath that, he's probably wearing one of those ones. I don't know. Um, Hemorrhoid uh, tourniquet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Regan Lee says she comes over as being a bit of a defender of Putin. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, that's a good observation there, Regan. <laughs> oh, dear. <clears throat> there we go. There we go. Where are we now on time? St. Patrick was crucified on a cross shaped as an X. Show it on Twitter. Ah, uh, that does Grant Stone, so was an, so was Saint Andrew. Oh, but i now. Let me get set, set something clear. I'm an atheist, okay. I am most definitely an atheist. I'm very sorry for you, uh, um, churchgoers out there, and and those who follow this imaginary god. But I put all religions, okay, including those who follow prophets, right? Muslims and all that, you know. I put all, I group them all together. I do. Well, a religion and um. Flat earthers, okay, uh, they, they, and uh, chemtrails and all that. Uh, they, all, they all come into the same little basket for me. I'm sorry if I offended anybody with that, but you know, I, I, I just don't understand it. I really don't. I'd, I'd rather follow science, you know, things that are real. Oh, that is a, a round court, okay? It's not a crystal ball, and I can't really. Yeah. When you see a food or anything like that, it's a round quartz. And it was made round by a human being. Or probably actually a machine. By a human being crisp or something like that, I don't know. That's all crazy. But there you go, that's my point of view. I don't know. Leave everyone to their own, I suppose. <laughs> Russians are allowed to vote. Oh, quick. Nope, done that already. And you are right, though. Uh, I did it. I was jamming. I was jamming to hear his plan. He got bugged, <laughs> bugged by Russia. 
Because you talk about grand chaps, did he get bugged by Russia or something? Of course. Like, I wonder if those intelligence reports was a phone call from the Kremlin saying, to Russia Creek, uh, not Tofe. I don't, uh, that was probably, I don't know, uh, that was probably uh, WhatsApp messages or something. I don't know. You, you tell me. Could be. Chafer. Chafer liver chaps. Oh, crikey. Oh, that's a, that, that just falls off the tongue, as it does. <laughs> Thanks for that, Larry the Cat. Chafer for liver chaps. Oh, and his, uh... <laughs> and his hemorrhoid, uh, torn, okay. Below me. They twang, you know, those things do. They twang. That is one heck of a bead. A bead or a beard? It's growing, isn't it, eh? It's actually quite getting quite long. <laughs> I, I, I succumbed. I was going to grow the size. I was getting very Jack Black. Everyone thinks I look like Jack Black. I'm just, oh, crikey. Jack Black. Yeah, anyway, that was what came out here. It was white, dark, white. Whereas Jack Black is like black, sort of dark, white. <laughs> I love Jack Black, though, I have to admit. He looks a genius. Hilarious man. I, love, I believe in big elephants. Do you? Doc knows, do you? Oh, yeah, I hope you will. Uh, <laughs> it's getting there. It's really getting there. I'm going to keep growing up now. I've got past that itchy stage, so I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. I might put beads in it, maybe. I want plaits. Have written plaits or beads? Huh? You know, I, I was going to try and get a little, little moustache going on there, but it was irritating me. You know, like a little twist uh, handlebar going up, what we call it. Curl the ends with some, I don't know, with some uh, beard wax or something. <laughs> you know how it goes. I got my beard brush. Part <laughs> in the you know, I got a dimp I got a dimply chin. You see, so I'm, I don't miss out on my dimple chin. There you go. What do you reckon? Uh, no, that's not too much. I, I'm probably molten. I really am. Yeah, molten. I've got my dandruff from my beard. <laughs> Hello, Andrew Evans, hope you're well. Good evening to you as well. <laughs> Get a rough beard and moustache. Uh, Get a rough beard. Rough, what? <laughs> Have a shave, says Jasper. <laughs> I, I, I'm not one for shaves, I get a rash. No, I don't like shaving. And now it's more okay, so it's more, it's more like getting the scissors out. I look like Santa. I just put a part in the middle. What do you reckon? Yeah, so where my dimple is? No? It's my Kirk Douglas dimple in the middle there, you see? And a damn. Plat it. She, no, no, she, no, no, she's going to try and plat it. <laughs> oh, crack, this is all getting there. This is like, this is like, this is like, like porn, <laughs> is. is it like porn? That's too fluffy. I can't oh, believe me. Oh, crack. I'll get all excited. <laughs> Whoa. Look at it. Oh, Look believe me. It. Oh, go and tug on your own hair, you know. <laughs> Hello. I'm being abused, I am. I'm being abused. Blimey. Crikey. Hello, number three. I hope you're well. Betty Kershaw, keep trimming the tash. Slurp uh, the <laughs> smoke goes. <laughs> He's been putting conditioner in. Oh, no? you have to. Cause, been cause, cause it gets really dry. Because that was a bit crispy. That was getting crispy. Crispy, no. That was, going, it was, going, it was, that was really sort of. It was like it was dying on my face and it was going, it was going brittle. Brittle, that's uh, it. I was like, no, pits for that. I have to condition it. it. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, funds for beard wax, Mark. Let's go for it. I got beard wax. Thank you very much, my friend. Got. <laughs> should, we, should we put some beard wax in? <laughs> so, uh, so, so you can, so you can uh, be all artistic and create. It isn't quite creative then for yet, is it? I suppose you could twist it in That's places. It's too thick. It's too. It's very. It's, it's a tough beard. I tell you, it is, it is a brillo beard, isn't it? It is. It's, it's a, a brillo pad, isn't it? It's like a brillo pad. I tell you yeah. what, yeah, it's like a scar. Exfoliating bed, it is. Yeah. So, it... how, how long are you actually growing up? It's going to keep on growing. Until I can throw it on my shoulder, okay? Oh, I want to be able to do the timidite with my head, with my beard, you know? Beds make, so you sort of fling it. beds make people look a bit old. I don't care, I'm an old fart anyway. Oh, yeah. I feel like it. My body's falling to bits. Anyway, it's true, though. Know? Mm. The bed molster. Molster? There's a beard molester. Oh, molester! Got me! <laughs> <laughs> oh look, it's a beard molester. <laughs> Hi Caroline, says Billy Kershaw. Hello to you too. He said hello, hello to you. Hello. 
You look like Robert Plant. Oh, God, you're not you at all. <laughs> Robert Plant. Let me show you who Robert Plant is. Oh, crikey. Oh, in Jack Black, it's Robert Plant. Oh, yeah. Jack, Jack, uh, there you go, Robert Plant. Jack Black's beard is a bit more wiry and um, longer than yours. <laughs> And a bit out of control. What? Well, he sort of like, he like does that. Oh my god, he looks a bit of a caveman. There you go. Apparently, I look at Robert Plant. Mm, no, your beard's not like that. He's a bit no, old. yes. He looks quite a bit older in you as well. I think he's quite a bit older. He's only seventy odd, isn't he? Yeah. Robert Plant. Yeah, I don't think that's a compliment. I don't know if I got his hair though. <laughs> I definitely ain't got his hair. Yeah. He's got really, ringlets. You grow it, you tough some more. What's the point of this live stream? What are we doing? Talking about my beard and stroking my head. <laughs> <laughs> Santa, thanks for that, Regan. <laughs> oh, you're really dumb. <laughs> Donate <do> <laughs> a garden. I'll do me a tree till Mark shaves all the beard off. <laughs> I'll stay in for a bit until I get fed up with it. Uh, it's better to look like Jack Black than a soprano cross with a Russian mobster. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Sorry, uh, not, 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 not me, okay. <laughs> uh, with that beard, you can rip into Farage. You've, you've ripped up my fish in your head. Like, what, what do I look like a fisherman? Uh, uh, all I need is a yellow sou'wester. That's all I need for that. Uh, even yeah, Caroline. We're, start, we're starting a donation thing to serve to, to shave <laughs> Mark Gusser's bed. Oh, look, look, look. look even Caroline, it will, it will be a back sack and crack soon. <laughs> I've, watched, I've watched him have his oh, back, no. back waxed before. Oh, you have, haven't you? Yeah, yeah I have, I've been there, done that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look, someone's donated too. Uh, Mark's is doing a beard stream. <laughs> yes, <laughs> beard live stream. <laughs> I, 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 that wasn't deliberate. It kind of went that way. Blimey! Me, you were talking about it before. Anyway, <laughs> God, was it? I wouldn't be. No, nah, what me? What? Never. What talk about my beard? Yeah. So, so you mentioned it in the chat. We're doing about Putin. Putin. We're doing about Putin. Then we'll do about uh, uh, Bill Gates getting twenty-five years. Cheers, that's some. It's a double stream. <laughs> yeah, multitasking at the minute. So, Craig, there's not. Although I've only got. I think there's only two people in the um the short feed. That's surprising. They don't normally get a lot more in there. I blame YouTube. Farage, there we come. Is this the uh, <laughs> only fans fetish for beds? <laughs> a bed, bed fetish. I know it's a fetish. It's, it's, it's take a lot of work, you know. Blow me. Yeah, go all over the place. Anyway, should I get back to what I'm supposed to be doing? I think it'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? Ah, oh, dear. So yeah, okay. So he's won that. Vladimir Putin won. Um. Ah. Uh. Okay, let's break up he cares bit. more about spending your money to Trump. and sending it break to Ukraine. And you know what? We got to. We'll do things with Ukraine. We should loan them the money, not we'll send them the, the money. money. Okay. We should loan them the money so that if they do make it, if they make it, they're against tremendous odds. But if they make it, they pay us back. Loan uh, uh, them. Uh, 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 uh. Is he missing something here, or is he just trying to hoodwink his uh, his knuckle draggers? I think he's trying to hoodwink the knuckle draggers myself, because quite frankly, uh, it doesn't work like that. Because you're buying armaments from American uh, manufacturers and then send them to Ukraine, so the money is actually staying in the United States, unless they're offshore or not, of course. The money, give it to them as a loan. Let them be a little bit like they have to be a little nice. Loan them the money. Don't just hand them a check for sixty billion. I tell you, Zelensky is one of the greatest salesmen in history. Every time he comes to the country, he walks away with fifty or sixty billion dollars. I've never been able to do that. He's a better salesman. He's a much better salesman than I am. He cares more. Doesn't work like that.
Did you realize that uh, France is one of the biggest exporters of uh, um, of uh, munitions? <clears throat> oh, damn these people. God. Uh, okay, they have a bit. Now, now, Elon Musk, all right, he's gone full on Trump. All right, he's just literally gone full on Trump. Oh, there he is. Okay. Unbelievable when I see it, when I see it going. But I got to know all these people. They're very smart, very streetwise. And I would do the same thing if I had prisons that were teeming with MS-13 and all sorts of people that they've got to take care of for the next 50 years, right? Young people, they're in jail for years. And if you call them people, I don't know if you call them people. In some cases, they're not people, in my opinion. But I'm not allowed to say that because the radical left says that's a terrible it's thing to say. Point. They say you have to vote against him because did you hear what he said about humanity? I've seen the humanity and these humanity, these are bad. These are animals, OK? And we have to stop it. We can't have another lake. And we have so many people. We have so many people being hurt so badly and being killed. They're sending their prisoners to see us. They're sending and they're bringing them right to the border and they're dropping them off and we're allowing them to come in. And these are tougher than anybody we've got in the country. These are hardened criminals. And we've got hundreds of thousands of them. Oh, incitement. And uh, we're not going to take it. We're just not going to take it. We're destroying. They are destroying our country. I'm telling you. He's the worst president we've ever had and the most incompetent president we've ever had. And he's also the most crooked president we have ever, ever had. Now, other than that, I think he's doing an excellent job. Do we agree? Oh. And Elon Musk is pumping this stuff out on his platform. He's using his platform to push conspiracy theories by Donald Trump. Now, I, I, I always thought Elon Musk was a logical man, but he clearly isn't. He's clearly another loon. He's just... Oh. But don't worry. There is a wonderful gallery. That maybe, if the war ever finishes, you'll be able to go and visit. Mm -hmm. Have a look around. And that's fantastic. Fantastic it is. Beautiful images, though. You know, just images. Paint oils are in, in gilt frames. Absolutely fantastic. This gallery. Well lit. You know, with, you know natural light and all that. Fantastic it is, yeah. It's the Putin gallery of Putin. What have I done? Oh, no, what have I done? We with you как бы за главные картины этой выставки. Картина из собрания Третьяковской галереи, она называется «Радуга». Вот у этой картины перед нами действительно реально дух Божий. Вот от рассвета до заказа, утро на море. Солнце только-только поднимается, и все еще в этом мареве утреннем. Это тема встреч, прощаний, и эта картина интересна еще тем, что в ней нет вот этой красочности. Тем, что и эта встреч поднимается, и все еще в этом мареве утреннем. Это тема встреч, прощаний. What the hell is going on there? Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin, their best buddies, they are. Oh, crikey. <laughs> oh, dear. И, и эта картина интересна еще тем, что в ней нет вот этой красочности, броскости, которую, которая нас так увлекает во многих и многих картинах художника. А все очень сдержанно. Сурово даже, немножко сумеречно в этой картине, но очень все верно и очень убедительно э, передано художникам. Whatever next? Oh, crikey. Well, I suppose it could be. Why has it gone slow? Mm, I've got a spinny wheel thing going on here. What's going on? There we go. 
and you're not going to be able to sell those guns. If I get elected, oh, if now, I get if elected, I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. But they're not going to sell those cars. They're building massive factories. A friend of mine, and you're not going to be able to sell those cars. It's, it's just, I don't know, my governor guys. He's just, he's just crazy. Play that a lunatic. Oh no, have you got two streams? I says Tory Top get tasted. Yeah, you know, I'm in the short feed, but also in the long feed. Yeah, the normal feed as well. So if you, if you want to go onto the other feed, each, I can show you all the things come up on the screen. Then you see, uh, Trump as such a man. Uh, Trump as such a man. Crush on Putin. It's embarrassing. It's for gingers. Sorry, gingers. Has he got? Um, has Donny got a? Uh, uh, yeah, Donny's calling for violence again. Inciting violence again. He's always doing that. That's why he's got his crowds around him. You know, big them all up with him. Big and I don't know, K forty sevens and Desert Eagles and stuff. They're crazy. But, but now, you need to escape that place, gingers. You do. I see a Pandora. That would do. And a Sebastian. Oh, she she got it. Where's Wally? Where's no Wally? Right. Who's seen their thirty P flea uh was sitting next to Oh Craggy Waste Monster Galloway? Well in the Parliament. <laughs> It was a backbencher. <laughs> oh, he's a reform party. He's got to give him his due. He's the reform party's only uh, MP. Who's saying that? Oh, like the cat said, uh, Trump. Of course, all jumped up and down. Oh, why oh, means all jumped up and down? All right, there we go. There we go. Donny is calling for violence, which definitely is. Like the cat said, Trump turd won't flush. Not even the net can flush him. No, he's a stamp on him quick. There you, go. you could just deflate him. It is a, well, a blimp balloon after all. That's what I saw in London. Oh dear. Yep, he is. I think he's asking for violence. Sloan, I did a dead, oh, I had a dead bird in my yard. Compliments of one of the neighbour's cats. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, we've got a cat, a cat, and it does get the birds occasionally. And I'm not happy about it, no. Uh, da, 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 da. He's got two! Ask Caroline. Oh. Uh, Jeanette Kirk can't tell her there. He's not going to win. He doesn't have the numbers. He's getting the nomination because the non crazy uh, refugs are staying home. As in the Republicans. Who they got to vote for? Let's get there. Oh, oh crack it! That group, you know, Republicans against Trump, as well, aren't you? They're obviously working hard. He's dangerous. He's he's dangerous. The damage he did last time, and all they did is what feather their own nest, didn't he? You know, he, any reason why he wants to be a president again? Obviously, he probably won't be president anyway. But he, he needs to keep himself out of jail. Well, it's been delayed again. It's next um, hearings and delayed again until April at least. Oh, lock him up, I say, lock him up. Let him keep running his mouth. Oh, dear. Good luck, Ginger's been trying for 300 years. Oh, crikey. Today is the evacuation day in Boston, Massachusetts. Look up what it is. Evacuation day. All right, well, I don't know what it is, so I'll have a look. The evacuation day. Is that some kind of colonic? No? No? Okay. Evacuation day in Massachusetts. Oh, Massachusetts. This is what I spell it wrong. So two S's. Yeah. Crikey, that's a, that's a name and a half, isn't it? You can work that one. Well, I don't have the longest roast. Uh, we go back, 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 back. So Holdy uh, observed on March the 17th in the Suffolk County. Massachusetts, and also by the public... Okay, what is it? What is it? Oh, what does it mean? 
1783. Ah, the last of the British militia and those loyal to the British Empire were ordered to evacuate New York City. Oh, independence. Back in Scotland. Scotland needs its independence from this lot, I tell you. Crikey, the flippin' gone loody thickly mad they have. That's a weird sentence. Didn't you make sense to that? No. Come on, America, stop the Tories. <laughs> They're probably funding them. Uh, they aren't, and that, oh, sorry, they aren't, and that is what has the powers to be scared. Shitless people stay home. And they lose Congress and state houses. Do you think people are actually just scared to actually go to the polling booths in the in the United States as well as obviously like what we saw in Russia, because of um, people with guns and the crazies out there. The only thing I would say, you know. If I was to try and look for a reason, or a positive reason, to advocate for the Second Amendment in the United States, or anywhere for that matter, it would be to have a people's army. The idea that anyone's ever going to be able to invade the United States, I think that's for the birds. Oh, it's crikey. You've got all these natters with flipping machine guns in their, in, in their mother's bedroom. With their kipping. <laughs> you know? Going for, you know, sneaky, like, shootouts and stuff. And the occasional drive-by for the hell of it. You know, you've got to keep the guns warm and all that. Whereas, like, for instance, in the United Kingdom, get invaded in, invaded there. Well, you done for, you got Now you got to defend yourself. Pitchforks. Like my ancestors did, you know? Back in 1549. Oh, catch rebellion. Some states, I have friends who are women of colour in uh, Texas and other red states have already had people at polling places trying to intimidate them. Oh, God, really? Mm. That's not democracy, is it? When you haven't got... Uh, you feel safe to be able to vote for what you, what, what you believe in. Or what's right, in this case, I say. Is it possible that many people are scared to vote in any election? But where, though? I don't think people vote scared to what, you know, who to vote for in, like, for instance, in the UK. I don't think there's that, um, that, for, that kind of peer pressure, especially enforced peer pressure, like, for instance, with guns. Like I say, pitchforks, maybe. Or maybe confronted by, I don't know, Richard Lice. Can I get him in your face? Good send out. Uh, Alan Whittacom. Threaten everybody. I'll show you a bit. If you don't, vote for the Reform Party. Oh, crazy enough to make anyone vote for the Reform Party. Just to still crack it. That's not more. Oh, oh, that backfire. Some states I have friends. Oh, done that red. Sorry. Uh, screw up, 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 up. There we go. Uh, <laughs> Dad's army got pitchforks. Eight markers. Yeah, Dad's army. <laughs> Uh, look at the bright side. People are scared not voting. Are scared not voting in Russia. Good point. After uh, 1010, you can't even walk up to someone's door in Texas without getting, oh, without getting a lead in your head. I know they have a lot of these door cameras, don't they? They keep posting videos online of people stealing their, stealing their parcels on the doorstep. <clears throat> Uh, responding to Joel, many in the US hold down two or three jobs. A bit like politicians in the UK, but they make sickening amounts of money doing Yeah, uh, in the UK, that is. So, well, that's happening in England as well. You know, people are struggling. They really are. That's, you know, really got the Tories, they're getting their pay rise. They're just taking the like, piss out of people, really, aren't they? You know, they're 91 grand again now. 91 grand. Well, you know, ordinary folk, and um, to do free jobs just to pay the bills. 
It's just wrong. It's just wrong. Uh, we used to turn up, tell them your name and a vote. No ID or not quite. Oh, yeah, of course. You've got to register the vote now, haven't you, in the UK? That's stupid. That just puts people off. Puts people don't bother. We must free ourselves from London's shackles up here in Scotland. You must. Grant's like, oh, I'm slow. Um, you've got my support on that. I don't think there's any choice now. I don't think. I don't think I know. And you know as well the fact that. Uh, Scotland is just disregarded by, you know, I had to put it, uh, your England's cash cow, or England's uh, lifeline for energy, fuel, whiskey. God, uh, not really, not really, okay. Right, let's get rid of these. Oh, I have enough of Putin. I'm bored of Putin now. Yeah. Right. And Grant Chaps. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Right, from riches to an ankle bracelet. Is the uh, well? I know. I I know. I said uh, Bill Gates. I was talking with this lovely fella. He, he had some. I mean, he needs to grow a beard or something. Anything to cover up that face. Oh my giddy arm. Anyway, it wasn't about tycoons, you know, like tech tech geezers who keep cocking up like this, like a Hester geezer, you know, the one who called um Diane Abbott. Not called you. Know. I I hate all black women because of Diane Abbott. Or what's that effect? From riches to ankle braces. Anyway, this guy has been nicknamed, um, you know, like England's um, or the UK's <sighs> Bill Gates. From riches to ankle braces. Yes, UK tech tycoon Mike Lynch's stunning fall. No, he's not in the UK at the moment, though. He's in, in the US. So the Bill Gates could spend up to 25... Britain's Bill Gates could spend uh, up to 25 years in jail if convicted of fraud in a 2011 uh, sale of autonomy to Hewlett Packard. Now, Mike Lynch, the technology tycoon, once dubs Britain's uh, big, Bill, big Bill Gates, has spent the last 10 months in San Francisco with a GPS... Uh, oh, a brace that's strapped to his ankle. Obviously, they can see him fly wrist. Uh, and two armed guards monitoring him around the clock. How much does that cost him? And this week, he heads to the court to face a long, hard fight for his freedom. 25 years he could get. And it's been 13 years since one of Silicon Valley's most storied companies uh, bought a Lynch's uh, business in a blockbuster takeover that seemed to confirm his image as one of the UK's most brilliant technologists. Technologists. Oh, anyway. Uh, now the deal is that at the centre of a criminal fraud trial. And if convicted, he could spend up to 25 years. It's a white collar crime, isn't it? Uh, in jail. Blimey. Boot the old like button. I keep forgetting that. Don't there you go. Boot the old like button. Uh, be most appreciated. I don't love you. <laughs> it's been a stunning uh, fall from um, Grace as a co-founder of Autonomy, a software firm that became one of the shining lights to the UK tech scene. Lynch uh, was lauded for his achievements and business awards at the OPE. What is it? We give these people, God, they give them OBEs and, and, and then they lose all credibility. <laughs> Look, that Hester Geezer, he's got an OBE or knighthood or whatever it is. OBE, OBE, yeah. OBE, yeah. <laughs> We're living useless, aren't we? Anyway, that's what services to enterprise in 2006 and appointed in 2011 to the Science and Technology Council of the then Prime Minister, David Cameron, who gave us Brexit. I just want the Brexit. Yeah, we got that, didn't we? Didn't work, though, did it? No. 
I'm getting that into that in a moment as well. So he served on the board of the BBC and established an investment firm that backed Dark Trace, the cybersecurity firm. Now Lynch is about to embark upon an arduous battle to persuade a jury that the highlight of his career, Ottomany's acquisition by Hula Packard, was not built on a pack of lies. Now the odds against him are high. Mm. US uh, federal prosecutors have fair some record and most defendants would rather plead guilty than actually go to trial. Analysis by the Pew Research Center last year found that 71,954 defendants in federal criminal cases in 2022, only 2.3% of them went to trial and only 0.4% of them were acquitted. But Lynch, who has pleaded not guilty, will need to uh, dismantle the allegations surrounding how he constructed, led, and presented automedy to the world. Uh, Attention in the courtroom is likely to turn swiftly to one Thursday afternoon uh, in August 2011. Ten minutes after Wall Street closed for the day, uh, HP revealed a master plan. The world's largest maker of personal computers, had um, computers had enough of the making personal computers and uh, and wanted to transform from hardware manufacturer to a software giant. Now HP are doing something rather flipping disgusting a prepayment fucking oh, scam for printers. Who the pack out? You know when you pay uh, like a monthly fee for your paper and your ink and stuff like that, and you got to pay no matter what, even if your ink hasn't run out. You know, you know how it is. Scamming you, basically. And that is Hewlett Packard for you these days. Don't buy Hewlett Packard. Stay away. The only snag was the software uh, was responsible for just 3% of its sales. Now, Tomini, a fast growing and much hyped software and data company that uh, counted Coca Cola and Nestle among its clients, looked like the answer. HP agreed to buy Tomini in a £7 billion deal to accelerate our uh, strategic vision to decisively and profitably uh, profitably, uh, dominate the software industry. And Leo Apfeka, HP's CEO, declared its purchase to be a highly profitable and globally respected with the attractive um, business model and uh, well-regarded management. For Tomney, though, the man who built it, the acquisition was an extraordinary lucrative endorsement. And this is a, a momentous day, said Lynch. <laughs> Not that in. And the celebrations didn't last long. A prophetic was sacked five weeks later, and Lynch departed as uh, the Tomney CEO less than a year after the takeover, as his firm failed to meet expectations inside HP. It would not take long for the situation to go bad from bad to worse. <clears throat> Sounds like you just scammed HP. Now, by November 2012, just for 15, about, about just 15 months after the deal was first disclosed, it had rapidly and disastrously unravelled, and HP had ultimately bought Autonomy for $10.3 billion and wrote down its value by uh, $8.8 billion alleged serious accounting improprieties, uh, <clears throat> improprieties uh, disclosure failures and outright misrepresentations at Atomini before the purchase. Sounds a bit like Donald Trump. Huh? Bigging up his value, uh, yeah. yeah, his net worth. And he gone to court for that? And yeah, that's what. And he, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and Lynch said he was shocked by the claims. Shocked he was, yeah. yeah in fact, got, he got found out. We flatly reject this. There's no truth in this, he told the BBC. And suggesting Altoni had been managed very badly by its new owner, which he accused of, of using uh, these accusations to distract from dismal earnings. It uh, lost uh, around half of the staff before I left and the whole of the management team. Sounds a bit like uh, uh, Elon Musk. Exactly, that's what he did. And, you know, the value of the company has now fallen and they've been forced to write it off. But HP said a senior autonomy executive had uh, come forward with the concerns that had been substanti- uh, substantiated by an investigation. 
It pledged uh, to aggressively pursue the issue and referred the findings to the British and American regulators. What we uh, now believe is that this uh, was a willful effort on part of certain members of Tomini management to inflate the underlying financial metrics of Tomini when it was a publicly held company before HP actually bought it. <coughs> then Megan Whitman, apophetic, oh, anyway, successor as HP chief executive, in a deliberate effort to mislead shareholders and mislead um, potential buyers of the company. If it's a public company, that's public records, so couldn't they buy that out for themselves? Unless you're talking about prospects and futures. And officials in the UK um, do the uh, launch their own investigation, which was closed in 2015. The Serious Fraud Office uh, said that there was not enough evidence to secure a conviction and ceded the jurisdiction over aspects of the case to the US authorities. And the other thing is, I suppose you could have a way to pursue it. In 2016, the federal government charged uh, Hussein, who had served a, a, as chief financial officer at Autonomy, uh, with fraud, and Hussein, who denied wrongdoing, stood accused of exaggerating the firm's financial performance and misleading investors. And he was convicted in April 2018 on 16 counts of wire and securities fraud and jail for five years in 2019, by which time US pro um, prosecutors had turned their focus on, yeah, his former boss, Mr. Lynch. And in 2018, the federal grand jury indicted uh, Lynch and Stephen Chamberlain, Autonomy's former vice um, uh, president of finance, and the pair was accused of scheming to defraud Autonomy investors, including HP, about its true performance, financial condition, and growth prospects. To be fair, growth growth prospects have to be taken with a bit of pinch of salt, don't they? You know, it's, it's a it's a gamble. But I, I don't know how they can actually get him on that. I, I, personally, I, I think this effort that that feels a bit it's a bit whiffy. That does. The Bee Gees didn't release that one. No, they didn't. What one? All right, here we go. Back into Scotland. There we come. There we come. All right, here we are. Never liked HP. They're the crap. Don't like HP. Don't like Black Smart. You know, if, for instance, my printer, I've got two printers down there. I've got a Canon down here, which is one of them multi things. And my brother, laser printer. And that thing's brilliant. Because you can actually change the toner in it without having to change the chip. Which is pretty darn good. <clears throat> and I, don't, I, don't I got an Acer. I got an Acer computer as well. Yeah. Uh, Acer uh, Predator. Which is like a gaming, a gaming laptop, and then I've got this top, which is an Acer, it's a bit of, a bit of everything, because I built it. Uh, uh, what? What about your P? <laughs> Feds don't generally take cases to trial unless they are fairly confident of winning. Good point. Also, a lot of cases are settled with guilty pleas. Yeah, what's it saying on there? But unfortunately, that isn't... That's only if he has a guilty plea, isn't it? You're done? Yeah. Oh, you're going to bed, are you? Oh. She's going to bed. Yeah. You tired? Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, 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 it was because you were in the live stream, I said. Did it tire you out? <laughs> did, did, did I tire you out? Well, there was gardening in the, in the morning as well. Gardening? Gar oh, okay. Oh, done. No, no. Night -time. Night -time. Sleep tight. Oh, Have I got my wallet? Yeah. Where is it? He's following me. <clears throat> anyway, where was I? Probably. Probably, probably was. I buy cheap printers and toss them out when the ink runs out. <laughs> uh, 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 I don't like that idea. <laughs> Sounds a bit kind of my... No, I like my, um, my, my brother laser printer who I use most of the time. And plus, they don't. If you use them for labels, things you send on Etsy and stuff like that, they don't end up by running. The ink don't run because there isn't no ink, it's toner. Uh, da, 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 da. 
Uh, they did make a good sauce. Oh, crikey, they do, don't they? Oh, crikey. Oh, I do like HP sauce, I have to admit. <laughs> I read McDonald's hit a 7 billion profit loss. Whoa, in their Middle East market. Loss. I mean, they start doing sushi. Uh, I saw your uh, impression of an art. I saw your impression of an artist taxi driver this week, Marcus. Did you get the shades and open the the easy account? What? I'm confused. What shades? Take. Oh, do, 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 do. oh so. Good evening, there, Jeff. I hope you're well. Houses of Parliament sauce travels well. HP sauce. <laughs> uh, HP brown sauce. Yum, yum. Oh, definitely. Yeah, or daddy sauce. I like daddy sauce as well. No, no, no. Bo Boeing. Can you, British, can you, don't mention Boeing. Their wheels fall off. Panels fall off. Their computers don't know when the, where the ground is. And, and also, they keep getting off track. Like, for instance, literally off track. Yeah. Flight control, don't know where they are, I've gone. Those two are saying, but what is the side of the e-sack? Going to go for uh, a walk. Probably a pee up the car or something. Here we come. Oh, you've got your hummingbirds back, have you? Well, we're starting to fill up with birds here. We're getting quite a few. Oh, uh, don't you know Mark the artist? Yeah, I know uh, Mark. He's talking about the guy who, who who yells at his tablet, newspapers and stuff. Uh, do the Larry, do the Larry and the Paul with seventy Yorkshiremen at the end. Larry and Paul. I've got to love Larry and Paul, isn't it? Oh, there he is, the favourite chair. <laughs> what, my butcher's apron? Probably. So. So he's been a very naughty boy. Yeah. There you go. But, you see, we do have... I had to put... Uh, why not? Actually, I could use this one now. Can I use this one? Well, according to... This geezer, all right? Because you know, it's, it's... where's that? There you go. That one, that one there. That one there. Not that one. Not that one. Not that one. That's that one. Reform. Not that... Oh, not reform. Don't want reform. That's a crazy there. Well, I'm Paul Diana, but I'm no fan of Diana. But I'll be absolutely honest with you. And. Um, but she did not deserve the treatment that she got. And also she didn't deserve the treatment, not just by um, that Hester Geezer, but also by in Parliament. They totally ignored it. Did you see that? That's horrendous. You come in now, do you want? Come on, in there. I'm not going that way. I'm going this way. There you go. Sorry, but she's opening it again. So Diana Abbott. Okay. Uh... There you go. There she is. Oh, Diane Abbott. She's about seventy odd, you know. She's a bit. Of, she is a bit of a trailblazer. Like Harriet Harman even said that, you know. So ex Deputy Labour um, leader Harriet Harman told the BBC Miss Abbott was, was an amazing trailblazer. She did say some rather silly things at times, I have to admit. But, she, you know, she's one of the only, um, well, not one of the only MPs at Bound Fair, but she's one of the MPs that does actually a lot for the constituents. And that's why she keeps getting voted in. You know? 
it's the people that vote for the people. If you feel that you're being taken care of and being looked after by your MP, you're going to keep voting for her, aren't you? If you think she works on, you know, on your behalf and works for you. And she didn't deserve that. And Labour suspended at Miss Abbott didn't, you know, over the anti, um, her anti semite although she said it was a draft, anti semite comments, anti Semitic comments. So, she, yeah, she withdrew her uh, remarks. I did a video about that, actually. I got criticised for it. I, I, I didn't buy it personally. I didn't. I, I, and the other day, the way I saw it was when she's what she was saying at the time is what she was, is what she was thinking, what how she was actually feeling about it all, you know. And she, she yeah, you know, whether she it was a draft or not, it doesn't really matter. She still wrote it. Anyway, she was suspended, wasn't she, um, back in April last year? Um, and now obviously we have the situation with that Hester, Hester Geezer who is an avid Brexiter and funded um, Vote Leave. Horrible cretin that he is. Absolutely horrible cretin. So, let's go back onto that again this same. Oh. Oh, dairy, dairy me. But it's not surprising, though, is it? You know, is this geezer just saying what a lot of people are thinking? What's it say about the English? Not all of us, obviously, but you know, a lot of people are. Um, they agree what he said. The hate that that Diane Abbott has had to actually had to be blind of because she's gonna be funny. You know, that statement she gave recently, you know, she basically, basically said that she's scared. You know, she's. Written being a single woman, taking away on the bus as it is was frightening enough sometimes, and uh, and now she's got effectively this. She gets death threats and all sorts of stuff. So it's, it's people are horrible, absolutely horrible, aren't they? You know. Um, and now they're saying it, it seems like to me that the the media just like swung it around back onto the the anti semite row. I was listening on the Sky News this morning and I thought. And it's kind of missing the point, you know. The two separate issues regarding um, what she said back in April last year, you can't com really compare that to, you know, there's, there's, the, the, the correlation isn't there. This is a different issue, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. So they're going about whether she, she should get her whip back, what have you. You know, whether she should or not, I don't know. You know, if she refused to go on to a course regarding anti-semitism and anti-semitism of course but she didn't the thing is though she, it's like she's in her mind she doesn't think she did anything wrong she doesn't be, feel she was being anti-semitic at the time she was making a rather crass um comparison between being ginger wasn't it? being ginger and being uh yeah racism and, gin, and being ginger so basic group and uh Jewish people with being ginger. I don't think that kind of works like that. But yeah, you know, I think it's just it's something else to draw you away from what happened earlier in the week with Hester, you know, and distract from the fact that Hester has been, well, handing more money over, more donations. There we go. There you go. There you go. Reveals Sunak flown to Leeds for a private tour. Of Frank Hester's office weeks after the five million pound donation, one of many. <clears throat> it looks like it's a far, there's downside more than what we first thought it was. <clears throat> You're very noisy, especially. Hey, get us Molly's food, not yours. Not your food. I've got Sebastian going in the wrong bowl. He's at it all. I've got sod. Wish Caroline wouldn't do that. Putting his food down right. Telling me. Right. Lose my voice. Right, so yeah. So soon its relationship with Hester is now under the spotlight after the Guardian investigation revealed um let's get a bit bigger. Uh on Monday that the um mega donor made comments about Diane Abbott which have been widely condemned for being racist and misogynistic. Well, not just that. He was inciting violence. 
He suggested that she ought to be shot. That's horrendous. Horrific. Well, Sunik initially declined to comment on Hester's 2019 remarks that uh, looking at Diane Abbott makes you want to hate all black women and that the MP should be shot. Who says these things? A Tory. A Brexter. I'll tell you what. Yeah. Not just that Brexter. No, there's other ones as well, you'd say. Look, this, this geezer down here. My God. I, I, I think it's a foregone conclusion that this guy voted for Brexit. What's the most Tory thing about Salisbury? What can I say? Whatever you like, I will beep out all the swearing. Well, do you Ooh. know, you, you have to be black, lesbian, queer, or any colour except white to be a politician in this country now. And it's better still if you're as thick as shit like Diane Abbott. All that sort of stuff, run by absolute idiots. You know, you buggers, lock me up if you like, but you won't shut me up. Anyway, see you, boys. Are you right if we use some of that for our video? Yeah, use it all. What's the most Tory thing about Salisbury? What can I say? Whatever you like, I will beep out all the swearing. Well, you know, you, you have to be black, lesbian, queer, or any colour except white to be a politician in this country now. And it's better still if you're as thick as shit like Diane Abbott. Or that sort of stuff, run by absolute idiots. You know, you buggers, lock me up if you like, but you won't shut me up. Anyway, see you boys. Are you right? What the heck is going on? They walk amongst us, you know, they do, they walk amongst us. Oh. It does feel a bit like a setup, though. Like he had this, he he was um, oh, rehearsed it. <clears throat> Maybe that's his line in the pub. Either way, he's an asshole. Uh, 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 uh. <clears throat> Sorry, Topsberg, I'm not having that. Uh, after, oh, John Lydon has let himself go. God, you've seen that, have you? Oh, God, I need to find that. Oh, my God. Did I play that before? John Lydon. Or Lydon. <clears throat> oh, this is recent. Crikey. Oh, here he is. I'll put that into there. Yeah, he's another one. He's a, f oh, a racist son of a, you know what? Britain today is so, so catastrophically disappointing. Um, a lot of it, this tour that I'm doing uh, will be in seaside towns. And I mean, they really indicate how run down Britain has become. Those used to be fantastic places when I was a kid. Mum and Dad would drag us off there for what felt like hours in a traffic jam. But it was absolutely great. It was working class people throwing sand at each other. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was excellent. And the environment was uh, economically thriving, I suppose, in the seaside towns. Everybody wanted a kiss me quick hat. Mm. It was vibrant. And, and it's, it's and not, it's not like so vibrant now, is it? No. Oh. No, it, it seems to be full of what they uh, term uh, prospective immigrants, mm. <laughs> which are really like illegals, uh, not being cared for properly, but then shouldn't have been uh, accepted in such vast numbers because it's created a, a real, real animosity in communities. Mm. The division, when you import so many people with a completely different point of view, they're not going to adapt to yours they're going to stay and bring the problems that they that 
allegedly escaping from so, with them. Uh, John, w what is the difference? Because after all, if I can put it this way, we imported the Leidens. We imported you a lot from Ireland as well. You were part of, you know, the Irish migrant group in North London. So yes, it, and, 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 and my you mum and dad, and the first thing my mum and dad ever would tell me when I was very young is, you're British now, be British and be proud of it. Yeah. Oh, Most excellent advice, that. and I, I followed mm. through. Uh, of course, oh, I have really? uh, derogatory comments on uh, mm. the way the royal family is being manipulated. But as human beings, I've got no problems with them at all. In fact, I feel sorry for them. I think that they're kind of like birds trapped in gilded cages. So when they explode emotionally from time to time, I kind of empathise. Well, John Lydon. Okay, there you go. I did it for you. No, weren't you lucky? No. So. Oh, Johnny, you kicked out the European rats. <laughs> oh, Jeremy, what an embarrassment. I've got two Sex Pistols records up here. Both, yeah, never mind the bollocks. Two editions. <laughs> oh, dear. I watched walking videos in the UK and there was a city so poor the hooligans couldn't even afford spray paint. So there was no graffiti. Couldn't they use blood? No? Who's that? Oh, Wally. Wally's dick my fingers. Lovely. All right, that's Sebastian. I can have Pandora. Oh, there goes Wally. There's Bear. Sebastian Bear, ready? Oh, that won't be clever. Won't it be head? Dora. Oh, Wally got it. Oh, well, he's had two. And don't worry, you've got to make an effort, baby girl. That's not really making an effort. Anyway, where was I? <laughs> Johnny Rotten attempts Will self pastiche. What the hell's going on with his hair? <laughs> John Lydon, massive drama queen, trying to be relevant and failing so badly. Yes. Hello, David. Uh, David uh, Gerardo, hope you're well. Hola, uh, Marcus. How's UK going? It's, it's going to shake. There you go, I told you. Uh, there is already a date to rejoin. Yes, yeah, but we'll be dead. Uh, by that time. Has Trump drunk again? Uh, yeah, Trump is always drunk. No, he don't drink, does he? He just eat Big Mac, Big Macs. His, his brain's pickled with uh, with pickled relish. I don't know. Uh, top smoke till. What? Uh, does someone just stick a bowl on his head? <laughs> God, the clip is <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's how he's dealing with his receding hairline. Yeah, something quite, quite, quite good on there. That hair, I know. <laughs> that is bad as my beard. Uh... <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, I've, sh I've shown you the gammon. Yeah, there's one for you. No gammon. That's what I call gammon. But I think we need to remind ourselves. Okay? If this case of hair was going on about the kind of people that should be in Parliament, but aren't necessarily lesbians or whatever, because you've obviously got a problem with lesbians. I don't know. Strange people. They'd rather have. Stand up and fight. For the freedoms Just to remind you. we have won against socialism, whether it is made of velvet or iron. Have courage and conviction because when you do, <laughs> you move our countrymen, our communities and capital of all kinds to our cause. Stand up and fight because when you stand up and fight, uh -huh. the person beside you... She said that stands up uh, well, and fights and what? when our party stands up oh, and oh. fights the nation 
stands up and fights. Well, and when up. our nation stands up and fights, got, uh, other nations stand up and fight. And they stand up and fight for the things upon which to sit there. the entire progress of humanity depends. Freedom. <laughs> that is what conservatives do. <laughs> oh, God's sake. That is what this nation does have courage, <laughs> bring hope, stand up and fight, stand up and fight. Thank you, conference. Oh, I just hope they play at a funeral. Oh, blimey. I'm not, I'm not, not, not just yet, you know, when, you know when, when she finally goes, in the future sometime, you know it goes. Um and crikey. So Lee Anderson. Ah uh, Lee is right, okay. But as we said, Lee is right. There's two versions of this, by the way. There is. I tell you this is the Perfect. capital of common sense. Look at them all. These are these are clever people to grafters. I tell you this is Did you ever you are... <laughs> oh, I wonder who, who who did that. It, it might have something to do with uh, a particular lady that was quite vocal while uh, Lee Anderson was doing his march. Mm -hmm. It's telling everybody how great he is. All right. Oh, crikey. There's a lot of swearing. I, I, I warn you. Why did you, let, why did you leave the Conservative Party, LA? I couldn't give a fuck. Sorry, that's all right. Why are you back in this? Why did you leave the Conservative Party, oh, Lee? That's a watershed, don't we? Eh? Hey? Um, I'm not sure she's helped much, to be honest, but there you go. How come you're such a fucking wanker, Lee? Hey? Carry on, sir. How come you're such a wanker? Answer the question. Then what's she getting paid for this? Hey, 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 what's she getting paid for Lay, shut your mouth! Lay, 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 lay! Anderson, stand up! Reefle! You died today in Ashfield. You piece of. Touch me again. Watch what happened. Touch me again. Touch me again. Really? Touch me again. I don't know who I feel sorry for. Oh God's sake! Takes all sorts, you know, but uh, yeah, she's very vocal and she has a point of view, but I don't know if she's helping the cause. There you go. Take care, Grant Sloan. Be good, mate. Uh, that lady could take him. He's terrified. <laughs> Probably. It, she'll kick his ass. <laughs> Most definitely. It's a valid question. That is a valid question. But you're not going to get an answer, are you? Fair play, that woman. Oh, I'm waiting for this. <laughs> That's what I call British education. <laughs> God's sake. I don't think I don't think Charles, do we? She is fierce though. She is a very angry. And she got a valid point. She's very angry, got a valid point. Maybe she Maybe the swearing doesn't help. I don't know. You live by the store. Do you got to do? You got to stand up and fight. That's what you got to do. You know. Fanny more do She'd endorse this. She would. Yeah. You got to stand up and fight. Can I buy a bear? <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> yeah, she slaughtered them. Do right. <laughs> <She's>... <laughs> oh dear. So.
Now the second version of Lee Anderson's, this is the, the real version, the other one was the edited version. So I've showed you um, uh, this edited version of Lee Anderson. This was a, this was, I told this you this is the capital generated. of common sense, look at them all. These are, these are clever people, uh, grafters. I told you this is the Perfect. capital of common sense, look at them all. Capital of these, are, these are clever Fucking people. Yeah. Clever people. But, you wreck. <laughs> but um, this is actually the doctored version. This is this. I think it's AI generated. It's deep fake. Um, the real one, which is uh, here, uh, uh, this one. Here we are. I told you this is the Perfect. capital of common sense. Look at them all. These are these are clever people. See? Grafters. These are hard-working people. See you, darling. See you, darling. Take care, Paula. Tell you this is the Perfect. capital of common sense. Look at them all. These are these are clever people. Grafters. These are hard-working people. See you, darling. See you, darling. Take care, Paula. <laughs> oh, they back into chat. You're back. I can see you, Top Smoke. Uh, that woman was a sister of Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg, probably, quite possibly. Uh, Lee stands up and runs away like a coward. They came out of the masses for 30 p square head. I don't think there was that many people there, was there? Apart from the, apart from the zombies. Hmm. I was wishing they should biff them. <laughs> the old racist. God, that would be fun. That would be fun. That would be. But she'd be the one in trouble, wouldn't she? You know? And everyone would be filmed, not everyone, but people would be filmed. Oh, I shouldn't they ants and all that. You know, it's, it's like I was watching a oh, cracky. I was just waiting for this. And there was, um, I can't remember her name. Uh, Asha. Well, what's Asha? That woman, that, that um, the black woman on um, GB News trying to cover up for uh, uh, Hester. I call that kind of thing. I call her a scab. People like that are scabs, you know. You, well, they cross the line. Cross the line. You live by the sword, stand up and fight. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Oh, so in green. They are looking for his 30p lunchbox. Probably. Quite possibly. That they are. Well. That one there, that one there. And Brexit. Oh, okay, we've got to do a little bit of Brexit, because at the end of the day, you know, Brexit is a gift that keeps on giving, you know. Yeah, isn't that great, Brexit? Are you enjoying your Brexit? No? Okay. Well. All right, there we go. Scroll up. Oh, da, 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 da. So, oh, here we go. All right. It ain't panning out, no. The perfect microcosm of how mo uh, migration hysteria causes harm. This is an incredibly worrying report. So, early indications for next financial. Actually, not the. Um... Universities, universities in the UK, are they are really struggling because the foreign students, are the ones who are subsidising the British students, the universities can't run without the foreign um, foreign students because they're probably paying for wacky. See, this is going to be the same story regarding the um, nursery places and stuff like that, where the nurseries have been subsidized by those paying the full price now everyone's going to be getting this from nine months eventually isn't it going to be getting um free nursery places 30 hours or whatever it is a week uh the nurseries are not allowed to top it up or ask for more money i'll shut them down i've made videos about this before when he first announced this because i knew the school because you know i knew people working it and also my kids just anyway and uh, I, I think it was back that stuff to the budget when he when he brought this up before regarding his nursery places. I said it back then, and it is actually happening. The, the nurseries are now saying, "Hang on, no, we can't manage on this." When they start coming into play, the, you know the actual uh, free nursery places, and it's already started, and they're gonna start shutting down. 
they're gonna, there aren't going to be enough nursery places anyway. So I don't know how that's going to pan out. They'll have to try and get the money elsewhere, wouldn't they? Like, well, maybe I don't, don't supply the food, but charge double for us. I don't know. ...year are that admissions of foreign stu students are down 37%. Why is this significant? Uh, Post-Brexit, uh, EU student numbers plummeted, and this was replaced by uh, largely Chinese, Indian and Nigerian students. Because of the economic crisis and because of a hostility a quiet, to the visa system in general at the moment, government saying they're cracking down, those numbers are beginning to go down. And what that means is that uh, because British students are loss-making, there are fewer foreign students to sort of subsidise British students. So universities are now in the, in the position of saying that they're looking at taking fewer British students in order for yeah, them to, to be to, for, to make the funded. books balance. Yeah. 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 You know, because we've had high inflation and the, the so universities have students. been frozen Spice. since 2011, I think, when mm, they were introduced. Yeah. Mm. And, and so... British students are now need basically a, a, an accompanying foreign student to subsidise their education. I mean, the, we haven't got very long, but the, it, this is it's a big question for universities, how they fund themselves. I'll tell you that the big question is, we need universities, we need education. We need to get more people into some sort of form of education. Even though there's got to be an education until 18 now, it's not working, is it? Megan, it's not the answers to the problem, is it? It's actually my generation, possibly your generation, that are, well, a lot to blame. Easy hoodwinked by right-wing tabloids and, you know, like Daily Mail, Daily Fail and Toy Graph, etc, etc. Yeah, but the universities don't have much choice over things like tuition fees for mm. British students, for example. So some people or will visas. look at or, or visas. Yes, all visas. So some people will look at this report, and actually, higher education has to is at the victim of different various policies, and they don't have much they can play with except for admission numbers or course uh, offers yeah. and that kind of stuff. So that's what they're saying. They may cut courses and stuff. Yeah. 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 Lovely to see you both this morning, Thank Cindy you. and Alex. That's not good news. It really isn't. It's just pretty diabolical, to be fair. Because, you know, education, education, education. Oh, who said that before? Oh, it's Tony Blair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, Ruth Caffrey, I hope you're well. Uh, Polish. After him, David. Oh, oh, Paulie. Marcus, I met a, a Scottish lad here in Spain. He ran away from the UK. He doesn't want to go back. He is trying to learn Spanish. Best way, I suppose. Stay put. Don't go back to the UK if you can help it. Or don't go back to Little England. Not necessarily Scotland. What? So he doesn't want to go back to Scotland? Who of a country? I know. Oh, unfortunately, it's under the thumb of Westminster. Sorry. Uh... I saw a study which showed 25% of female nurses and doctors in the UK had been... Whoa, sexually harassed and worse. 25%? That's horrendous. Sexually harassed. 25%? Blimey. That's, har that's, that's really high numbers. It's a quarter of them. Well, Portuguese immigrants in the UK keep on dropping six years, keep on dropping six years after Brexit. And that's the public home. I'm not surprised, to be fair. I really am not surprised. Um, Post Brexit, a lot. And also, don't forget, during the pandemic, also, many were frightened and they were, what well, can I get back to my family in, in the EU? And they returned what, when they could. So that definitely happened. And many of them decided, well, there's not a lot of point now, is there? And also, they've lost their rights because they left post-Brexit. After the pandemic, you know? Poor dad, he cries every time we meet. What are you doing to him, D David? Put the tear in his eye, believe me. 
The only thing that is absolutely limitless is knowledge. Cut education and you cut your future. And the arts. It all goes hand in hand. It changes the way that you think about stuff. And when I went to university and I did my photography degree, it changed the way I thought about stuff. It really does. It opens your mind. It makes you look at things differently. So although you say, oh, okay, I didn't pursue my photography and stuff. And for me, I'd, I'd, done, I'd have done fine art photography myself. You know, that's, that's one of the hardest things to actually make any money in. But, you know, um, I, never mind the photography that. I'd say the fact that I actually went to college and, and learned with other people. And, and youngsters as well. It was quite a mixed group. Obviously, a lot of people have gone through the stages to get to university. You know, youngsters and what have you. And, you know, I've heard you know, sort of like uh, early 20s and all that. Um, but then there was a lot of mature students as well. If anything, the mature students were more dedicated to what they were doing because they... They had to give up something. Whereas a lot of the youngsters basically have been fiber phoned by the parents, or maybe they would at work a little bit and pushing themselves through. I have much respect for that. But um, it had a different attitude. But also um, different life skills and stuff. So they're kind of added to. Um, they looked at things differently. From the youngsters to the old people, we, you know, we, we looked at things differently. So, you know, we all, all got our positive traits, obviously. But it, I, I felt it opened my mind, really, to different things. Looked at things more laterally instead of just, like, blinkered. And I don't know if... That, for instance, my father, he was a really good artist, but he had no imagination, which didn't really go hand-in-hand hand with being an artist. He could paint really well. He was a brilliant painter. You know, oils and all that. And, uh... But he tended to copy stuff. To, he, oh, I like that bit of image. I think I'll paint that. And that's what he did. Like, I, I got a picture of my wall in there that he painted, which... Um, in Hamburg, Harbour in Hamburg, and uh, anyway, because he, he'd been there, so he, you know, he, he had a photograph of it, and he, and he painted it from the photograph, so he's basically copying the photograph, oh, a lot of people do that, I know, um, another one is, is another, uh, another, another oh, like an old uh, square rigger, I can't remember what, what ship it was, he painted, but it was actually um, an old master's painting that he just copied, He's been copied as Lowry and all that sort of stuff, you know what I mean? Um, uh, but he never really created anything f himself. He could design a boat and build a boat and stuff like that. But the the art side of it, in the sense of that, that open your mind up to creativity, it really wasn't there in my father. Highly skilled man, but that little, if he had that little bit of creativity, he could, I think it would be a different kettle of fish. And... I think that's what university does. It opens your mind and makes you think about things differently. Uh, I, I think it's very important. I really do. It doesn't have to be university. It could be, you know, college and stuff like that. Just in education. Even in evening classes and stuff like that. The, the way you're being educated, if providing the decent tutors, that is, or lecturers, you, you just kind of um, makes you look at things differently. And plus, when you do further education, like, for instance, when I went to university, it is, it, you basically... You, you quite you in some ways you left your own devices within reason you, you you've got a remit that you've got to sort of keep to and you, you follow that and you have to look for things you have to search things research things you have to use the library <laughs> look at books <laughs> not just the internet no uh you have some clinics in at the Algarve, but most of them are now mixed in general population. 40,000 of their Portuguese passport in 2022. Probably El uh, oh, in the Algarve. Well, Tenerife, um, blimey, a lot of the Spanish islands, what have you, they're kicking out against um, the Brits now as well. Mainly the Brits, because obviously the Brits are the highest um, tourists in those, in those in Tenerife, for instance. And, uh, well, the people aren't happy. I'm, I'm going to do a video on that, actually. I might upload that tomorrow. Um, I'll think I've recorded it in the morning, but, yeah. Look it up, Tenerife, below me. <laughs> Crikey. So we're, we're frowned upon, we are. I'm sure we're not all like that. My uh, teacher wants to go uh, to London just one week, but not this, but not next week, to renew her European passport on 2020 uh and she'll 
she'll be okay at the airport. What, say again? She wants to renew her European passport on 2020. I don't understand. Uh, my teacher wants to go to go to London next for, for just one week. Not this, but next. So she can renew her European passport. It won't be a European passport, will it? It will be a UK passport. I'm confused. I'm confused, David. I know people that I thought were lateral thinkers until the last four years, and it turns out they were just sheeple. <laughs> Is that lateral thinking? You, 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 you can be a sheep and have lateral thinking. Actually, no, I mean, you blinkered, aren't you? A bit, yeah. No, you'll be blinkered. Oh, she'll be deported, yeah. More than likely. Uh, scrolling down. This is not news here. My German family, the closest is from the Algarve, and some more distant German bloodlines on the day on their side. This is a jaw. Uh, if you don't speak Czech, you go to Motel. A lot of Brits who, f who fall. What's a fall or fail? Sebastian. Uh, Oh, they're getting, to, getting to fights, and the worst cases are getting a food run over by a tram. What? Oh, get a foot run over by a tram. What? Oh, God, I cut your foot off. That won't be good. Uh, da, 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 da. European passport. Oh, they were the days, I know. Can you remember then? And I've got to renew mine this year. Carol's got to re renew hers first. Uh, it's quite easy to do, apparently. You know? so, oh, well black bendy one that looks like it's been in the damp uh i want to know if they will let my teacher enter with a european passport or need a visa if the passport is valid they'll let her in no she wouldn't need a visa because you got no she wouldn't need a visa as part of the Schengen. Uh, look, we've got basically um but a cut down version of Schengen. That's part of the trading corporation agreement. As long as you've got a valid passport, she should be able to use that. She don't need a visa to go to London. Not from not from Spain. <coughs> no. That's part of the trading corporation agreement, so that's not necessary. Decide as long as her European passport is valid. Make sure you've got enough time on it from the uh, issue date of the passport as well. They probably actually to be fair, that probably will be okay because it's, I think it's only the UK passports have longer than the ten years on them, which isn't valid in the EU. Amazing what people uh, can sorry what you can sorry amazing what you can people to do if you suggest they would go a holiday again. Oh sorry, again sheep. Well, I can see how the Nazis did it. Yeah. If you tell people a lie enough times, and there's no one there to counter it, that's why you're supposed to have you know a balance in Parliament. People will believe it, wouldn't they? You know. No, I suppose if you think about Hitler, what have you? He um, he helped salvage the economy in Germany. People start they believed in him, and then he, you know, got his mind camp, <laughs> and then uh, used it as his Bible. Oh, sorry, what I meant is Nelgarve has always been a place with foreigners, and my direct family, German family, settled there, and I have some other bloodline on my father's side, further north. You're quite a bit mixed, aren't you? I've got a bit of a mix in me, I have. If I told you that I was part Indian, you'd think, oh my god, really? No, I don't believe you. You've got a beard. <laughs> Indians can't grow beards. <laughs> They're all patchy, like Asians. <laughs> well, yeah, Asians, but you know, like Chinese. <clears throat> so, yeah, my mother um, was caught a quarter or half. Quarter Indian. <clears throat> my grandmother was a love child. 
in India. My mum came over on the boat in the 50s. Was it the 60s? I can't remember though. Late 50s, early 60s. Oh, I can't remember. I didn't know the name of the boat, but I can't remember though. We found it online actually, the boat, and told, uh, had, had the passenger list on there, which my mum was on there. Well, the whole family was on there. Yeah, that whole lot came over. Uh, it offered cruises to the Portuguese Atlantic Islands uh, to common Germans as a reward. Oh, blimey. I know an American who has been here for 25 years and speaks worse Czech than I do. Uh, what passports are asked, says Top Smoke. One man telling another man he can't go somewhere. What an incredible concept. Or is it something that tells somebody that they can go somewhere? <sighs> okay, fair point, Freddie Mercury. All right, I'll get you. A lot of them don't have like, patchy ones. Ah, oh, Freddie was Persian. Well, the Persians ruled the world, they did. Uh, I'm hearing that the EU are... Ha oh, Taylor Boy? Dead Boy one! I'm hearing that the EU are having discussions with a few countries to issues... Uh, to issue freedom of movement to those already legally settled in the EU. That'd be good. <clears throat> Because that would include resettlement. That means you could actually move and live somewhere else. At the moment, I can travel anywhere within the Schengen without any problems whatsoever. As long as I have a passport, it means stuff like that. And that wouldn't be any issues at all. But I can't settle anywhere other than them being in France. Obviously, I can settle in the UK, but then I lose my uh, rights here. And besides, why would I go back to that place? It's like, yes, it's like, it's like you know, that's just, oh. Which then means you can't go. Oh, where's it in? Right, uh, I still have my European passport. I'm very proud of that. I, I, I lose mine. Uh, I entered the UK when I lived there. I actually, I showed my identity card from Spain and Manchester Airport. They told me to wait to ask if it was valid. I suppose that it, uh, the thing is, though, you see, the gun tourists, you know, European tourists going to the UK, well, that's obviously going to go that's dropped like a stone, hasn't it? Since they can't use their identity cards anymore in the UK. You've got to have actually a valid passport. And not all Europeans, you know, as in mainland Europeans, because they're not Europeans, um, bother getting passports because they don't really, a lot of time they don't really need it unless they want to, you know, travel outside of the EU. Don't forget a lot of people come to the EU, <laughs> you know, to go on holiday. They go to Spain and places like that. You know, so Tenerife, maybe not that anymore, but, you know, <clears throat> away from France. It's getting expensive here, though. I have to admit, prices have definitely gone up. A passport has no meaning. It's a ticket. It's a ticket to travel. What about people voting to make their passports worth less than they were before? I know. <laughs> uh, what was the point of that? I haven't found out, has it? No. In fact, it's complete and utter mess. No. According to Kelly Bad <laughs> Kelly Badlock, everything is great. She did a report, you know. Yeah. So now import tariffs to be paused on 120 goods, ministers announced before the SME event. Oh yeah, fantastic. Import tariffs on goods including flowers, fruit juices and chemicals are to be suspended for two years. Oh, I wonder why that is. Oh, can you remember what well, was being reported about a month ago? How um, we all about to get any flowers because of the import checks and stuff like that. So now they decide, oh, I will skip that one. 
kick that can down the road again because it ain't gonna work. No. So Kerry Banadock oh, is a secretary, equalities minister. <laughs> equalities. Uh, will unveil a six hundred and sixty million pound Northern Powerhouse Investment Fund that she hosts the gathering on Monday in Warwickshire, where Richie Sunak and other cabinet ministers are set to mingle with business leaders. Oh, are you excited? Do you believe it? UK importers of more than one hundred and twenty products from all countries could benefit from the temporary withdrawal of duties due to come and force in April. And remain until June 2026, according to the Departments of Business and Trade. She says, we are harnessing the freedoms of Brexit to drive down import costs. <laughs> just, no, you just delayed it again. But SMEs, important goods like flowers, car parts and levers. You know, you gimp suit. Blimey. It's just it's so oxymoron. It's a the driving oh, crikey. Driving down the costs for SME, small to medium enterprises. We didn't have any problems until we had Brexit. And now apparently they're well now they're trying to get the credit for the fact that they're deciding not to do it on certain bits. Yeah, we'll delay that again. Right, you need people. But we have to look on the bright side. We've got something else we can laugh at. We can laugh at a rich. I'm absolutely life. clear. I think the British people want politicians, <laughs> leaders, so your the authorities favorite, Sunday to focus 110% on actually getting out of recession, getting the economy growing again, getting waiting lists down, getting police on the streets. Sorting out the criminal justice bill, controlling our borders, stopping the boats, all of these things is what the British people are obsessing about. Quite right, too. I think an election's coming. It could be very, very soon indeed. And that is what the people are going to want to hear about. I'm absolutely clear. I think the British people want politicians, leaders, the authorities, to focus 110%. Oh, God, so he's, so, he's awful. Awful. Oh, dear me. I think we're lost. I have seen the same tendency here, Scottish guy that uh, Scottish guy that drinks coffee at the same place as I do, distances himself from gammons. He cannot bear them, or well, they're probably English gammons. Most of them are, aren't they? Let's be honest. Probably wearing a, a butcher's apron, uh, yeah, butcher's apron underwear, most likely, and a hat. Uh, there's a trendy area here called Carden where you he will hear more English than Czech in the pubs. Mm -mm 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 -mm. He's a he's a feckin' posh Max Hedrum. <laughs> oh god, I love Max Hedrum. <laughs> Oh, I bet he's wearing third party lail. Oh, like a married girl. More than likely. Steve McGowan, usually here, they say no vacancy, reservation only. We are more discreet, but it happens. Uh, but no one wants rowdy tourists. No, it's embarrassing. Generally speaking, here though, we, we get English people come here, they on holiday or visiting family and that. It's not usually an issue. You get occasional idiots, but you know, but most of the time they're, they're pretty respectful and, you know, sort of, all their folks want to have a nice time, you know. 
I think Plato Spain attracts a, a different clientele. <laughs> I think we're all sane, them, aren't we? Do 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 and Andrew Evans was Andrew Evans what did he say? Uh, Ruth Gaffery and they wonder why many of us are anti English. Yeah, we're not all like that. I I hope not. Anyway, I, I hope don't think I'm like that. For God's sake, embarrassing. <laughs> God, to bear that, it's just some of these people are just horrendous, aren't they? You know. Yes, top smoke. I'm sorry to tell you, you need a piece of paper. It happens to be folded into a little book to go somewhere out of your own country. Because you see, there's countries, they've got borders. Do -do 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 -do. It might happen between Scotland and England if you get your independence. Maybe. Build a wall! <laughs> Mm -mm. Uh, good shirt. Yeah, fast sand percent. What fast sand percent, Gary? Well, I don't say what it means. What it means. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Marcus, this man of Sunday sermon didn't appear on TV uh, show Saved by the Bell. Yes. Also, it looks heavily cut. It's like, uh, 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 lots of jittery motions in it. <laughs> Uh oh, sorry. Here they say no. Oh, done that already. Uh, they need to start thinking outside the box instead of being slaves to the uh, mainstream media. You're not gonna change that, though, are you? The mainstream media or the media in general. They they're only gonna promote or do whatever they can do to. To push a narrative that makes them money, to sell their papers or get more subscri um, more advertisers or subscriptions or. That's all they're gonna do, isn't it? They're gonna carry on doing that. If being a decent person makes them more money, well then they'll start doing that. Will be decent media. Let's discuss Tyson. What about Tyson? What is that? I declare myself a free man, not a number. <laughs> I'm human. <laughs> Gotta get a sandwich, says Joe. Go get your sandwich. You got your sandwich yet, mate? Get your sandwich. Let's discuss Tyson's fighting at 58. How much roids has he got? <laughs> has he got in, in him? I don't know. It's too late now. It's been done. Uh, they take checks in the pub. Oh, okay. David, David Drago said, I miss my handsome Jeremy Corbyn. You poor sorry soul you are. Blimey. What, 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 it's always his brother, you know. What about his brother? Go for him. He ain't crazy. I declare myself a free man, not number. Harry from Harry's Garage uh, was in Benidorm in his cars tonight, but he was in a in a posh bit. I'll go right off. He's a right old Tory. He can he can do he can do one as far as I'm concerned. Uh, ham and cheese for me, please. Mm, please, ham and cheese. Hello, Wally. Do you want a bit? Do you want a treat? You've got to make an effort. There we go. Another bit. And there's a door. There, yeah, baby girl. Go make an effort. I'm not English. I'm a Welsh brummy. That's a combo. I was watching a UK guy who plays a, uh, a geo geezer. And he landed on the Spanish island and said that the, this is the island English go and why the English hate us. Or why the Spanish hate us. More than likely, I'm talking about beef or tender leaf. At the moment, tender leaf has really got a bee in its bonnet about us at the moment. At least I have something fine at the way. 
Oh, Craig, there's a whole load of it going on at the moment in Tenerife. Right. UK tourists in Mallorca, Malaga, and, Ten and Tenerife warned get out in a crackdown. Yeah, uh, Spain uh, holiday warning has been issued as UK tourists are slammed in Mallorca, Malaga, and Tenerife. And UK tourists have been warned to get out of some of Spain's top holiday destinations after a wave of protests across the country against tourism, predominantly in English tourism. So a new campaign in Malaga has seen posters telling tourists to F off. A local public, this was in a local publication. I live in a neighbourhood of Malaga called Fuente Orientes and was told a few weeks ago the owner wouldn't be renewing my rental contract. People get pushed out. And I had to leave because the property was going to be uh, readapted for tourist lets. Every day I'm receiving photos of new stickers and people that are making it, uh, it go viral. And there's a lot of movement because citizens are sick of the situation. Basically, they can't get a home because tourists are effectively, well, the properties have been bought up for tourism. Well, they're cracking down on though. The actual government, what have you, is cracking down on it. There's a lot of restrictions now on tourism. British tourism, or well, tourism in general, but it seems to be mainly aimed at the Brits because they are the highest proportion of um, tourists. The, in this article here, they did actually say, I was reading this earlier, um, I've kicked it off now, but um, it, it said that we looked for a better tourist. What does that say about us, really, you know? But we all get tarnished with the same brush, unfortunately. You know, so it's, it's quite shameful, really. Yeah, we've, got, we've got those lager loads to thank for that. And Brexit. Hello, uh, uh, Joe, he's back. Is that a sandwich? Uh, they won't need them after go. Oh, after, after. You'll get the English coming over in dinghies. <laughs> They won't need them after go. They can swim or get a ferry, which I'll start up. <laughs> George, I was watching a UK guy who plays. Oh, we've done already. I've done already. There we come. Let's face it, the Europeans hate. I don't think. That, no, they, they might hate some of the English. The problem is, is everyone gets stereotyped, you know? Just like you Scots, you all get stereotyped being ginger. <laughs> and, and you work all week and drink all weekend. You know, that, that kind of stereotype. I talk about drink. It's your beer, yeah? Where's my ham and cheese sandwich, Joel? Says uh, Ruth. Didn't you get the message? Didn't you get the memo? No. That's a problem with stereotypes, isn't it? That is a problem. I fancy a spam toasty. You want a spam of this, spam of that? Got me spam. <laughs> oh my god. You get spam here in France as well. They actually call it spam. It's basically like lunch and meat. Don't stuff. Oh god, that's horrible. No spam for me. Thank you. Rather do about the spam. Who wants to go to a crowded Spanish beach and cause problems for the locals? Good point. Uh, I always feel like an intruder. And I just go to... I don't know about that. I have to admit, when I've been to Spain, I never feel like an intruder because there's so many of us. I feel like, you know, maybe an infestation. You know? Now, my mother-in-law... Um, and father-in-law moved to Spain, Player for Manca, near Alicante, and uh, Valencia. And they had an a apartment there for which they were living in. And uh, it was a concrete jungle. And it was literally Brits everywhere, you know. 
Got a bit of same now. A lot of them actually sold. Actually, no, it wasn't. Because last time we went there, excuse me, lots of people selling up. And this was before Brexit. So there was a trend on its way anyway. But anyway, my mother-in-law, she moved here in France, you know, from Spain. And now she's back in the UK and they regret it, big Dom. I wish they stayed in France. Who wants to go to... Oh, don't know, really. <laughs> that fairy business. Let's put it on Dragon's Den. <laughs> oh, Ruth, you might be in business there. <laughs> Billy Kershaw said, I had four ham and cheese uh, on toast. I wonder if I can squeeze a wafer thin mint in. What? Why would you want that in there? Oh, in you! Not in your sandwich. Yeah, because it'd be a bit weird, your sandwich. Have it with a coffee. All right. I think it's time for me to go. Oh, I am losing my voice. Big time here. And I, I, and... What's he doing? Are you dude, Wally? He's my dude. Who's being here? So he... <laughs> He likes to jump on my bed middle of the night, wake me up, doesn't he? God, that girl. The Pandora. I, I, literally, her ears are just amazing. Yeah, there is a spell on there. Go. Yeah, that's right. Oh, damn it. Anyway, it's time for me to go. So I'm going to say toodaloo, you know, and thanks a lot for joining us. Have you had them? Let me get a bit of the old like button. Helps the channel, you know. Please want to help, I can get you there. And I'll upload loads more videos tomorrow, I think. I will. Also uploading quite a few on my woodworking channel. Which I am quite busy on there, actually, to be fair. I'm, I'm trying to do quite a bit on that at the moment. Um, it's, you know, it's fun. You know, it's squitty. But it's woodworking and other stuff. And tools and all that sort of, sort of thing. So it's a bit of everything, really. Control C. Let's put it in. I'll put it in down here. That's right. It's the right. Is it the right one. I think it is. Yeah. That's yeah. That's right. Isn't it? Oh. Link. 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 There we go. There's at Wally Bar Woodworking on YouTube as well. So they worked a bit in the search and that update, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's doing quite well on that. It won't be long if we have 30,000 subscribers on there very, very soon. Can't, we're just shy of 30,000 at the moment. I think we're at 200 or 300 shy of 30,000 sub subscribers. 200 shy. So, that's growing very, quick, very, very quickly because about. I would say it was 25, 25 or 26,000 of them we got since uh, November last year. So that's been growing quite nicely. So anyway, good night, everybody. I hope you all have a lovely week. And don't get depressed, even though news is shit. The world, the world is nigh. The end is nigh. The end is nigh. That's it. Is it right? End is nigh? Yeah, something like that. Oh, don't forget to stand up and fight, though. Whatever you do, you've got to do that. And maybe. You can, uh, well, I don't put it. Uh, any, 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 tell you what, let's have a little bit of this. Uh, 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 toodaloo to those in the short. Thing. Uh, time to go. Good night. Uh, But the structural reforms that we're about to deliver include the Brexit Freedoms Bill. The Brexit Freedoms Bill is a fantastic piece of legislation, a defining constitutional piece of legislation that will remove the dead hand of EU laws from our statute book finally. There are over 2,400 EU laws that will be amended or approved. And the government of all. 
It's not my freedom of expression to protest violently. No, you can't just start a riot or glue yourself to the roads and get away with it. Yes, friends, as Attorney General, I had to go to court to get some of these simple truths established. The judges agreed with me last week in the Court of Appeal in the Colston statute case. And that's why our public order bill will empower our police to stop this nuisance. So whether you're just stop oil, insulate Britain, or Extinction Rebellion, you cross a line when you break the law. And that's why we'll keep putting you behind bars. The NHS is and always has been a national endeavour. That was set out in 1944 when it was a Conservative politician, Sir Henry Willink, who put forward the proposals for a national health service. That's right, a Conservative MP from my home city of Liverpool who conceived the NHS. A good omen, I think. The most significant electoral victory of recent times and an 80-seat Conservative majority. And yet, today, I see the same old faces, the same voices, the same old politicians making the same old tired predictions. I see a group of spineless ditherers, devoid of answers to any of the challenges the world faces or that our country faces. And yet, they're there, baying with disapproval at the tough but necessary decisions that our government has to make. And where, I ask myself, is the leadership from their so-called leader? I will serve you with integrity and humility, and I will work day in, day out to deliver for the British people. We need to fund the furthest behind first. We need to fund the furthest behind first. And for too long, the political debate has been dominated by the argument about how we distribute a limited economic pie. Instead, we need to grow the pie so that everyone gets a bigger slice.